<laughs> Hello, how are you? Oh Ooh. my god. Yeah, they're in a bad time <laughs> for a call. Yeah, right on time. Hello, 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 <laughs> everybody here on Wednesday. How are you guys doing? It's the middle of the week, and hopefully we you are go. starting on a better foot than we are yes. today. <laughs> to be honest and transparent, uh, some technical issues appeared, but we're back and running. That's right, guys. You might notice a little blurry tonight. We are having some camera issues. Funny part is we had a drive run with our guest, and we were just talking about setups and all that stuff. Literally, we get off. And this happened. So you'll notice a little bit of blurriness. I don't have time. I've redone all the drivers I could. Um, so I'm going to have to deal with it after the show is done. The main thing is we'll be able to have our amazing guest on tonight. And some of you had the treat of getting to see him play last night. And for those of you who haven't, you do not want to move a muscle, guys. This is a treat. I kid you not. You are going to love this guy. He is absolutely fabulous, a fantastic, and all that stuff put into one. Cannot say enough good things about him. And yes, for those of you that are wondering who is he that we are talking about, uh, it's uh, Eric from EVH and Gear TV Network on YouTube. But he is much more than that. He's a, a man with uh, many hats. Uh, he is a musician, a guitar player. Uh, he's a fan of Eddie Van Halen, of course, and my dear husband is mm. as well. So there's going to be a battle who's a bigger one, I guess. But uh, let me tell you, our guest has been uh, in a tribute band of Van Halen one of the biggest ones at the time in US and he's also a photographer a video producer uh, what is he not yeah. no, he's in <laughs> the he's amazing the endorsements are crazy uh, tribute bands are around guys but remember there are some very big tribute bands that make a very good good uh, presence on the world music scene doing so uh, of course living in Montreal and the, for some reason the French's love affair with Pink Floyd we get the shows from Australia, for instance, that pl fills up the, 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 the Bell Center here where the Montreal Canadiens play full capacity. So uh, and this guy got the chops to back it up, the knowledge to back it up. And he is just an amazing guy. He's also a radio producer as he's done radio, excuse me, as well. He did all the web for eight years for radio stations. Tell me today. Once again, somebody who also knows where I used to work is <laughs> familiar with it and a store that he worked at that I'm quite familiar with. And uh, tons of music stories, guys. This guy's talked to some pretty big people. And uh, it's going to be nothing but pure pleasure tonight. Uh, so. Yes, that's yeah. right. And from the creator's point of view, you guys would like to know that uh, uh, once he started his YouTube channel in the first two months after uh, starting it, he actually got sponsored and are fully running on the sponsored promotions of different companies uh one of them is road microphones the other one is eddie van helen store uh gear store and uh, lots of other ones as well so if you want to know how to grow and get your channel uh sponsored in two months yes. from the beginning of it that's yes. also a guy to talk to actually his day-to-day -day business is connected with promotions and marketing and multimedia for uh, social media websites and also creators like you so yep. lots of questions lots of topics to discuss once again hope you enjoy your evening today and if you have questions more than welcome to ask them to our guest definitely guys remember in a moment we're going to call all your names out guys uh say hi to us and all that it's so great to have each and every one of you here thank you so much don't forget guys to tweet it out please hit that like button and if you have a friend or two you'd like to invite along please have them come over we'll treat them well we'll give them wrenches all that great stuff We'll definitely make them feel welcome. It's a pleasure to hang out with you guys. Uh, the billion plus channels out there in YouTube um, and all the things that come in life, you know, we're honored that you guys chose to spend some time with us and our awesome guest tonight. It is really awesome. Uh, as we always say guys uh, like share and if you're new please don't forget to subscribe so you can see our other content as well mm -hmm. we're here six times a week from sunday uh to friday yep. that's right interviews educational uh, tuesday tech talks and shout outs on sunday and thursday it's gonna be awesome uh i'm re oh sorry i just got caught i was just reading a comment here guys we're doing great lots of people coming in and make sure to keep them coming in keep tweeting it out keep hitting the like button all that great stuff. Tell friends. Uh, we're going to be getting to our guests in just a few minutes. Remember, guys, I, we had some trouble here, so I didn't have a chance to post it, but I'm going to put it now. It's not too late. Here's our link. Uh, oh, Amy G. Thank Amy you so very G. much. Hope you both are having a nice day. Well, thank you so much. Hope you are having an amazing, yeah. inspirational day as well. Uh, thank you so much. Glad to see you back. 
Yes. As I said, Hansman friends are our friends too. And Definitely. I'm gl- glad to see that you are liking what you're watching. <laughs> it means a lot to have you <laughs> in here. You. Thank you so much. And that was very, very kind of you. Uh, guys, there's the link. Uh, you can take a selfie of you watching us. If you can't do that, a selfie of you. Upload it to our Twitter. The link's included. And please also use the included hashtag Blue Wrench Group so everybody can see your smiling faces. If you have merch for your channel or stuff like that, that's a great time to take two seconds, throw it on first. Show it off to everybody. It's a great way to mingle. We ask for no self-promotion in the channel, but there, you know what? It's a great place to throw it on and show everybody what you're sporting. Yes, uh, Carlos Santin, I see. Uh, a, ge- a friend of Eric. So welcome to our channel. And guys, thank you. Uh, your Eric's friends that are joining us here today as well, welcome. And if you can join us into the hashtag Blue Ranch Selfie uh, fun, uh, we would definitely appreciate yes, that. Yes, it's always it, nice to see new faces. Yeah, it is not any affiliation of any kind. It's more having fun and having uh, introduce mm-hmm. each other on Twitter as well as on YouTube and uh, and we feature you guys' faces on the stream as mm-hmm. well. My buddy Rogers here from Canadian Drone Hub. Great to see you. So many ones. Guys, like I say, uh, Psycho Ghost Trackers. Hey there, guys. Love you all. Uh, the best. Right back at you. Thank you. And we're going to uh, say hi to each and every one of you guys in just a moment. We just give a couple of minutes for everybody to get in. And then we're going to give you an arena size welcome, echo and all, just to show you how much we appreciate you guys stopping by. So uh, it's great fun. Don't move a muscle. Once again, guys. We have a fantastic guest tonight. You're going to get everything. You want stories about rock stars and musicians? We got you covered. You want somebody who's a phenomenal guitar player? We got you covered. You want to learn about photography? Guess what? Got you covered. And about growing a channel, getting sponsored and all that stuff? Well, all check, 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 check tonight, guys. You want to know everything. how to promote your YouTube channel? You got that covered, too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, th- you're going to hear everything, guys. Plus, for the uh, Eric's fans who are so gracious to come over tonight... We were talking today and we're going to try and find a few little things that maybe you guys didn't know about Eric and and tie them in as well. So it's a win-win for everybody. It's a great pleasure. And overall, I must say, he's a great example of how a childhood dream can yes. become a reality because he is living his childhood dream. Yeah. And you're going to hear all about it. I'm so excited to hear that. Uh, well, guys, uh, we're going to do a roll call pretty soon. Uh, that's our way to uh, saying hi to each and every one of you who is joining us at the beginning of the stream. And that's your cue to put a like button, share if you can. And of course, Artem Orbit made it. Yes. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> our musician photographer friend. Uh, uh, so good to see you. <laughs> yeah, a good mix. I think uh, you, <laughs> you guys will enjoy each other immensely. So, yes. Uh, uh, TriStar Travelers is in tonight. Well, isn't that just awesome? So good to see you after uh, things in life and absences and all that. But it's just great to see you. So always a pleasure. Once again, guys, we're going to call out very soon. Just haven't seen. Uh, we haven't uh, we've just been lucky enough to get to see TriStar Travelers a little bit more in recent after a while. So that's a real pleasure to have you in here. <laughs> Anything else on the time? Well, I just wanted to the people that are coming in new. I just wanted to remind you guys who we are. We are yes. a husband and wife team from Montreal, uh, Canada. And during the day, we do photography, videography for business and family. And at night, we are on YouTube six times a week uh, from uh, Sunday to Friday. Uh, we do interviews with celebrities and creators. Uh, we do Tech Talk Tuesday and we do Game Night Shout Out wheel so lots of different uh, content here and entertainment for you all our information and the schedule is fully available in our about section welcome here and guy, yeah exactly sorry i was just gonna say that then i got the thought in my head then you said exactly go to our about section that's perfect aren't we a well-oiled machine all the time folks can't you agree on that one so we're not moving our heads too much so actually the blur isn't too bad but once again we had some uh, technical issues so i just want to remind everybody if you see us blurring a little bit that is going to be because of uh, some driver issues that we'll have to fix after the show is over. The main thing is we can bring our guest on tonight because it looked for a bit like we couldn't. Yeah. So that is a big Fingers plus. Crossed. Yes, that's right. Fingers crossed. Well, I think it's time for a roll call, yep. uh, guys. And that means that's your time to put that hashtag Blue Ridge Group selfie out there so we can check it right after that. Alrighty, guys. Anybody who's not used to it, I do it with an echo for two reasons. Because you guys are the stars of the show, you make the stream what it is, and we want to thank you so much for doing so. As well, oh, 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 thank you, Link, Lincoln Central Coins, for all the kind words. I've been seeing them pass by today. Thank you so very much. That it really means a lot. 
Uh, as well, I'm horrible at pronouncing names. I make messes of them, but please know I do it with love, and at least you can have a chuckle when I do it in Echo. You can really show what kind of an ass I'm in. Wow, this thing has really given us, I feel like I'm on the Doors movie. Don't look at us. <laughs> Don't look at us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mega Chan, thank you so much. Oh. Keep up the good work, fellas. Great content. Well, thank you so much for supporting us through That's Super so cool. Chat. Mega Chan, thank you so much. Thank you very much. That's really appreciated. I want to say a great big hello to X Written in Blood X, Wicked Fabs, Violet Cobra, UK Scrapper, True North Angler, TriStar Travelers, Tootsie Rolling Stone Travels, The Dustin Lungo Show, The Creator Spotlight Show, Survivor Tiger, Sticky Buds 420, Spencer Sharp FPV, SoCal Oki, Sky Pilot, Silver Shadows, Shadow of Darkness, Scrapping Irish, Rebel Rocker, Ralph Morick. And if I make a mistake, I mispronounce it. My deepest apologies. It's, please believe me, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Purple Gang, Psycho Ghost Trackers, Phantom Flight 101, Patricia Sprinkles, Papa Rome's Outdoors, One Day Millionaire, Omar Master, Novice Quads, Mim, Metal Stage O, Mega Chan, Lincoln Central Coins, Life with Melissa, Life Tips with Miss D, Leonard Plays, La La Lydia's Life, Lady B ASMR, Carla Cook, Just My Fish, Joyce McGuire, John Chum, John Amez, JD Knight Seven, uh, Jalen Chill Gamer, Jaded Diva Beer Reviews and Tours. I'm stuck. Uh, Oh, there's a Thank you so much. Try Star Travelers. Love oh. you so much. How I miss these two faces. We missed you, you too. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. <laughs> and it's just great to see you alone, but thank you very much. That's thank you. Uh, I'm Sucking Wind. Humphrey Bear. Hell's House Paranormal. Heavy Metal Magnet. He was blown away last night, man. I knew he was in his element, mm -hmm. him and Harmony. Hazel Eyed Vixen. Green Street Recycling Man. Grace's World TV, Get to the Farm, Gary Holt, Gabriel Z, Flander Yee. And we have a Nomadic Bike Raid. Hello to everybody uh, from Nomadic Bike. Thank you so much. Nomadic Bike, you're awesome, my friend. Thank you so much. Guys, I can't post it right now. I'm on the other side, but if you haven't hit that like button, please do. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button. And thank you so much, each and every one of you, for being here through the raid and just visiting. It's, it's a pleasure to have you all here. So thanks once again, Nomadic Bike. That's really cool of you, my friend. Uh, Femilies is in here. Femilies, depending, I guess I say the Canadian way lies. <laughs> Eric Garcia is in the house. Emma Morgan, Emilio, Emilio Takas, Eileen Valu, The Family, Destination Chronicles, Dead Paranormal Memories, Crimson Gend on TV, uh, Christine Reed Tube, uh, Canadian Drone Hub, Canadian Cali Prairies Girl, CJ Vid, Benj Games, Barrel Boy Woods, BN Outdoors, AU Pack Mule, Arda Morbid, Amy G, Alf VV, we call them, <laughs> Alyssa Parrish Rock Fam, 89 Mattel, welcome each and every one of you. If we missed your names, please say hi and highlight our name, Push the Studios, so we can give you a big hi as well. And thank you so much for coming. Don't move a muscle, guys. We're going to have one hell of a great chat tonight. Maybe even some music. He came in a minute ago and said he was getting the guitar uh, worked mm. up. So. Wow, yeah. my God. That's going to be a treat for those of exactly. you that went with us from Love with Pusha Raid yesterday night. Yes. You got to hear a little bit of amazing uh, play. So, yes, fingers crossed. I want to say a big hi to Grant McIntosh and Who's Your Back Outdoors. Great to see you. Great to see you. Uh, who else do we have in here? Oh, and, thank you, Flander Yee. Thank uh, you. Who's here back outdoors? Hello, good to see you too. Yep, Godspeed, uh, Super Beast. How are you? Good to see you. And Th guys, if you are listening to us on your headphones or just lurking, that's okay too. Say hi if you can, and if you can't, that's okay too. Hope you enjoy our night with us. There we go. Now we're off the echo, guys. We're off the echo. I repeat, off the echo, 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 echo. And uh, we're going to soon take a look at those selfies. I'm going to put up the link again, guys. It is not too late is not too late remember a selfie of you watching us and if you can't do that selfie of you upload it using the link and please use the included hashtag blue wrench group just so we can all see you 
Thank you so much, uh, Novice Quads. Really do appreciate it. Family Fun Channel. How are you tonight? Hey, you pack mule is a lurker. <laughs> well, we love lurkers. That's too. right. Lurkers. Special hello to lurkers. Oh, I know who we missed. Sticky butts, sticky butts. Sticky butts, sticky butts, sticky butts. Sticky butts, sticky butts, sticky butts. Sticky Buds has the greatest intro of all time, and it sounds like that with the other a little bit, but I can never master how amazing his intro is. So, and we love Sticky Buds all the way down there in Australia, my friend. A very, very good morning to you. Country Road Outdoor, Country Roads Outdoors, uh, pardon me. Hey there. Great to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Emma Morgan, I'm not sure if we said hi to you yet, but if not, it's great to have you here. Asgard Studios, howdy there. How are you? Guys, remember, we have an awesome, awesome guest tonight. No fooling, guys. No hype. All true. That's right, guys. Oh, well, I'm not, uh, we're not going to have Paul Gilbert, but we've both met Paul Gilbert. There's something. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, right. Well, there's going to be a lot of things yep. in common also to discuss between yep. these two guys, because I don't know if you guys are, uh, know that or not, but Andrew had worked uh, for a longest time in Jam Industries uh, as a promotion coordinator and multimedia specialist. Is that correct? Uh, I wouldn't say specialist, but okay. <laughs> my title was promotions coordinator. I did marketing advertising for 21 major lines in Canada, including Marshall, uh, Korg, Digitech, uh, Pearl, stuff like that. And I did a lot of the marketing advertising, also some artist relations, also some of the uh, liaison work for uh, movie placement and TV placement and stuff like that. So. And our guest is heading towards the NAMM show next yes. week, uh, which is uh, the biggest music uh, show out there, which Andrew has visited as well prior. I haven't been there since 2007 or 2008. I think it was 2008, and I'm going to add the summer one, and I'm going to... Uh, no, the winter one. Winter one. Sorry, 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 sorry. So there's going to be yeah. lots of things yeah. in common. And, of course, the guitar play. Uh, and yeah. yeah. So, guys, get ready. Get ready yeah. and share it out. It is very important that you share it out right yes, now guys. with your friends, neighbors. As I always say, knock on neighbors' doors and uh, call your friend and tell them this is entertainment for the night. Uh, come over and enjoy. Let's watch it together. Let's rock on, as our guest says. That's right, guys. And remember, we'll check later on again. But right now, I want to thank Infinity Master for tweeting this out and using the hashtag Blue Wrench Group. Thank you so very, very much, my friend. Life tips and tricks with Miss D. Hanging out here in Vancouver, B.C. with Pucha Studios. Uh, uh, if you're a hashtag small YouTuber or a YouTuber of any size, come join the fun and grow. Your thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Always such a pleasure to have you in here. There she goes. Oh, and tweeted uh, Misty. Yes, that is perfect. Awesome. City Girl, in the meantime, says we need more guitar play by Andrew. <laughs> well, we're, we got somebody who can <laughs> run circles around me. I'm in the spectator sport tonight. So I want to say hi to Life with Melissa. Awesome picture. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for taking the time to upload it. Oh, Life Tips with Miss D. Right back at you from the both of us. Much love to you. Thank you so much. Love you guys at Selfie. So nice to see you guys. See, there's a, this is a great example, guys. There, Scrap and Irish. Look at that. That is a cool look. And that's one. exactly what we're talking about. That's yep. your place, guys, to promote your channel. Yep. Uh, not in the chat here, out there on Twitter. That's yep. our place to put it everywhere. Scrapping Irish, it looks fantastic. Yes. I love it. That's I, great. Yeah, looking really sharp, my friend. I want to thank Mim, my hero, my superhero Mim, for tweeting it out. Thank you so very much. Try Star Trek. Well, isn't that a nice surprise? Isn't that nice to see? Looking good. Awesome Aww, to have you I love on. love to see you so much. Yeah, especially smiling. It's <laughs> nice to see with a big smile. She was always smiling. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> always, I know. always, no matter what. Mm. Uh, oh, so good to see you. Yeah, no, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for that. It really does mean a lot. Mega Chan, Mega Chan, how are you? Uh, well, I was told to do this on the stream. I'm not wearing my glasses. Not a problem. Looking good. And thank you so very much for uploading your selfie. Thank you. Really do appreciate it. Silver Shadows, thank you so much for kind words. And then we have Carlos Sun. Let's see what's going on here. Nice shot, my friend. Nice shot. Look at from Brampton, Ontario, Canada. Another Canuck. Hello, well, Canadian. Carlo, it is great. Thank you so much for taking the time. Really do appreciate it. Memes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, right back at you. Looking good. Oh my God, they're coming in like crazy, guys. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And there's who's your back outdoors <laughs> oh with that blue God. wrench? <laughs> You're such a goof. <laughs> Absolutely oh love it. Oh my god. 
Thank you very much. You're so crazy. You're awesome. Uh, Larry Johnson, hello. <laughs> Nocturnal Butterfly, hello and welcome. Oh, that's okay, Jason. We don't mind you uh, smashing the like button. You go right ahead, my friend. Grant McIntosh, look at this shirt. This looks great. I love these shirts, by the way. I think that's cool, simple, and, and just, I like it. And it's always a pleasure to have you in here, my friend. You are a really cool guy. Uh, thank you so very much. And there's the guy who raided Nomadic Bike. There he is. Oh, not, not a shop. Uh, he's got this amazing shop, and I love his shop, but this is a pretty intense picture, and I like it. God's be, uh, Godspeed Super Beast loves you all. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so, so much for the raid once again. You're amazing. Thank yeah. you. You you're always great to Keep have you, buddy. Safe. Yes. La la Lydia. And wow. this pretty lady said she doesn't have any makeup on. Oh my <clears> god. <throat> <clears throat> lady, lady, lady. Beautiful lady. Thank you so much. You are oh. amazing. You're gorgeous. You're beautiful. <sighs> Thank you so much for sharing. That's an awesome picture. Yes, it is. No makeup required. <laughs> no makeup required. Looking great. Eileen Velux, the fam. Thank you so much for happy belated birthday wishes. Yes, yesterday oh. was uh, my uh, birthday celebration stream. Together it was Tuesday Tech Talk. Thank you so much, everybody, once again, who came yesterday and all the birthday wishes. And, and anybody you, worried? I promise birthdays are done now for a while. I was on the 9th. Xenia was yesterday. <laughs> yes. And I, I kid you not, we have two kids. Oh, my God. Lou Rock's in the house. Hey, Lou, Lou Rock. Rock. How are you? How are things going? Nice to see you. We thought maybe ghosts snatched you or something. Yeah, exactly. We're ready. To, I was going to get out that box and try and talk to you at yeah. some point. Moose Scrapper, hello. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, guys, so so amazing. So many people. Uh, oh, you're very kind. And just a few years older than that, most scrapper. But thank you. <laughs> yeah. See, yesterday, as the night progressed, I got older and older with guesses. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, PD Peck is uh, PD Tech is wishing you happy birthday as thank well. Thank you guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Artie Morbid. Oh, oh yeah. I, I <laughs> thank you. See, I even forgot I had birthday yesterday. Eileen, thank you for reminding. Thank you. Um, oh, you've been working two jobs, Lou. Holy wow. crap! Wow. Wow. Man, uh, hats off to you, buddy. Hats off to you. <laughs> Good. Uh, well, guys, we're going to be inviting our guest uh, yep. in just a few minutes. Just reminding you guys. Any uh, moment, actually. Any moment that he is amazing, amazing guest today. And so many amazing things coming up. Uh, talk about music, uh, uh, about uh, making dreams come true. Uh, talking about different popular uh, celebra celebrity musicians, hopefully playing some guitar. Mm. Uh, talking about YouTube promotions and how to get your name out there. Lots of, of the day. To thank you so much for coming. So yes, thank you so much. And I just want to say, guys, we're just almost at a hundred in the chat. That's absolutely phenomenal. Lou, don't apologize for that kind of stuff, man. It's just nice to have you in here. Brock next. Uh, so we are his friends in the south. Yeah, uh, it's minus thirty-two Celsius, which is minus twenty-six Fahrenheit. Now it's getting more. <laughs> <laughs> now Montreal here we were beating you out in temperatures for a while uh, yeah. 24 <laughs> city girl country life country heart excuse me oh well thank you thank you so much survivor tiger uh, welcome again uh, CJ vid uh, thank you so much for making back again you're amazing mm -hmm. Uh, well, yes, guys. So uh, while we're getting our guest uh, in uh, the studio, yep. uh, don't forget to like and share, of course. And if you're new, please hit that uh, subscribe button. Gil Skills. Hey, Hello. buddy. How are you? Thank you so much again for last night. Uh, you were really awesome, my friend. Uh, we'll talk very soon. UK Scrapper, great to see you. Uh, Green Street Recycling Man. Oh, you rock, my friend. Guys, remember, whatever compliment you can give us, we can put right back on you. With It's 80-20. 20% us, 80 you. We built a home. We built a house. You guys make it a home. You've been, uh, you've always made us look good, uh, made our channel better, and we cannot thank you enough. Rocknix is teasing. They have 40 Fahrenheit. <laughs> we are minus 26 Fahrenheit here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> Nathan likes drums. Is in a talented guy playing the drums. He's so talented, guys. If you haven't checked him out, you got to uh, go and watch him, too. Most definitely. 10% increase in subs in just months. Yes. 
<laughs> That's all thanks to you guys. That's yeah, all exactly. thanks to you guys. We crossed 5,000 uh, just the Thursday before Christmas. It's That's all was thanks to you. And guys, uh, if you can help us out with the thumbs out and tweeting it out, we could really use your help as always. Um, we got a great guest in here and deserve to see as many people uh, as possible. Oh, his sidewalk closed. How are you? Nice to see you. And uh, it's just nice to see you, my friend. Ultimate fish keeping show. <laughs> Don't ever be sorry. Life always come first. We just glad when you can even pop in for a minute. Uh, so <laughs> never be sorry. <laughs> Destination Chronicles now double it to 10k. We're trying. We hope. We hope. We're going to work in that. We're going to try to think of new ways. We might actually start a bit of advertising and working with you guys. Uh, we got some things planned out. So. Little Lama Laura, please take care of yourself. Health always first. Thank you for the selfie. And I hope that you get some good sleep. Okay, guys. We're going to take a look at two more selfies. We just got up. And then I think it's time to head over to our guests. Yes, what do it you is. think? So we got Purple Gang is in the house. Wow. Oh, is that your hat? Jiggle Nation? Jug uh, juggle Juggle Nation? That was very cool. I, I love, love it that. that it's in on the inside. I yeah, I haven't seen those color. in a while. Yeah. That's nice. Do -do -do -do. Very cool. And there she is. <laughs> you are so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Laura. Oh my god, Laura from all the way over on the other side of the pond. You were oh. you yeah. Aww. Uh, thank you. Uh Chip, thank you so much. Yes, uh from Nomadic Bike. Uh, oh, thank you. Great to have you in here. CJ Vid, you're gonna get it back uh in a couple hours, usually. <laughs> Pusha Pepsi. Oh, Pusha Peeps. Oh, I had the, just the corner show note that I moved the window. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you said Pusha Pepsi at first. I'm like, oh, sure. You never know. <laughs> I, I, I might have to clean my husband's glasses. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Rattle Trap Fishing. Hello. Hello to each and every one yeah. of you just joining us. We're going to welcome our guest here. Uh, right. Amazing, amazing, talented musician, uh, guitar player, YouTuber, um, Oh my god, yeah, there's so many things that he can do and so many things to discuss with him. Uh, the people that he have met uh, during his uh, uh, shows that he does on his YouTube channels are amazing. He also recently has started the shows uh, featuring actors from Walking Dead. So if you yeah. are a, a fan of that TV show, uh, you are definitely interested in that as well. And of course, music, music, music has gone uh, through his life uh, all throughout. And uh, he had interviewed so many amazing people uh, like Jason Becker and Jeff Scott from The Journey, uh, uh, Whitesnake, uh, Ian Thornley from Big Wreck. Um, yeah. uh, that's just a couple to mention. So uh, I can only imagine all the stories. And guys, that's what it's about tonight. Everything about growing your channels. Guys, channels grown exponentially, getting uh, sponsorship. He's dealt with that. Worked for radio station, the music. I mean, it's gonna, we're going to cover all bases, so you do not want to miss a muscle. So. And we have a raid from uh, Victor Alfazio. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've seen a couple of you coming in, uh, but thank you so much for uh, clarifying that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Welcome here. Yes, Walking Dead. Yep. Yes. So, <laughs> gonna be lots to talk about. Yeah, guys. he has three different shows on his channel, and one of them is dedicated to Walking Dead. So, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. All right, guys, we're gonna get him set up and bring him on in just a minute, and we cannot wait to have this. This is absolutely awesome, guys. And I think we're just about ready to go. What do you think, hon? Yes. Uh, well, welcome, welcome. Let's welcome Eric. Welcome, my friend. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> How are you tonight? <laughs> doing fantastic thank you so very much i appreciate uh, the invite here oh well, i mean the pleasure is all ours i'm absolutely beyond honored to have you here so you got a lot of things that i'm into and that evh at the beginning of your channel is definitely a booster so we got lots, lots to talk about anytime we can work some van halen to some conversation it's always a good evening sold <laughs> <laughs> you know i didn't want to but since we're here it's got the topic you know no problem well no it's, problem. it's great to have you i guess we're going to start off right away and let you tell a little bit about yourself just a general little thing just so people can get to know you a bit better Sure. Um, well, I was one of those guys, you know, back in, in high school, even grade school, trying to find my niche or my thing that was, you know, going to be my life. 
I tried all the sports. I tried football. I was always a small guy back then. Uh, I tried hockey. The only time I ever scored a goal was on my own net. You know, I had a competitive cousin that was really good at every single thing he did. It was He's about a year older than me, and I always wanted to be like him. And I was like, you know, why can't I be like that guy? Anything he would touch just turned to gold. And then, you know, got into, I had a little bit of music influence. You know, there's always an acoustic guitar kicking around the house, but never really looked at music until maybe like seriously high school and had buddies, uh, you know, that were successful in high school that were a few grades ahead of me. And they kind of inspired me somewhat to like maybe pursue music. And so I did that. And then that, that was my life from that moment on, you know, the, the funny thing is, is in high school, it goes to show my age as well too, but we had typing class and computer class. We had like these Commodore pet computers. I don't even think they were that back then. I forget what they were, but we had a real typewriters the kids today won't know what that is. Yes. And, and so I was like, okay, I, I skipped out of typing class. I skipped out of computer class thinking, I don't need to know anything about computers. I don't want to, and typing is never going to save my life. Now, meanwhile, that is my life. Now computers and typing on a computer. Um, but m- music was the thing. So I started getting a bands together and playing the social, like the dances and the social nights, whatever you want to call them in high school. And um, it just kind of spiraled from there and, and never, ever looked back. It was kind of the thing that was, kind of saved my life i guess music more so than just about anything else that's so cool and i mean it's definitely like you say followed you through your life it's inspired you your life has had even when you work for the rio station and what everything has still had a musical element in your life it seems yeah. especially and in and your your own personal time as well as you guys know um you know like with your into photography it's all an art form most of the people i know in in the circle of people you know that i follow and things like that you know, you're an artist, you're a painter, you're a photographer, you're a graphic designer, you're maybe an artist in the kitchen, you know, like my, my wife here. Um, it's all an artistic thing. And usually people that possess one talent and one thing, you know, have a few. I'm not saying masters of all trades, of course not. But, you know, kind of a bunch of little, like a little bit good about a bunch of things, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. And I believe that is a drive in a person. Their the creativeness is always looking for that next. Uh, they don't leave behind their base creativism, but they're always looking for that next creative outlet to find. You know? Yeah, exactly. And sometimes I find too that you. Uh, and this is kind of a tip to share with everyone. No matter what you're into, always challenge yourself, and and just you are your only competition. And I don't want that to sound egotistical. I mean, you should only focus on. Okay, so this is my strength. How can I be better? I don't want to be better than the next person or uh, not less as good than the next person. I want to be better for myself. If I want to be a better cook, I want to be a better, whatever it may be, uh, just focus on your own thing. And I, I think that helps you in life. It does. I, as a side, like I always tell people, my motto was when I'm doing editing for myself, when it's not business wise, especially every video, I should learn three new techniques and they don't have to be big. Enough to challenge myself, but n- not enough to get discouraged or to let the techniques take over the work. But just to keep it fresh, keep something new, something just even a little twist, a new camera angle, a new little. Yes. It doesn't have to be glitches and all looking like every effect that's available. I agree. That's very well said. And the funny thing is, I, I have to give credit to where my photography skills came from. Um, I've always, I don't want to say I've liked photography because I didn't. I actually hated photography. And I was one of those guys that would, um, it was very impatient and photography is like, I will say is like kind of like fishing and I'm horrible at fishing. <laughs> My better half nocturnal butterfly. She may be in the chat a few times tonight. She's watching as well. Um, I'll talk a lot about her tonight as well too, but she is good. She's great at fishing. She's a great chef. Um, she's great at photography and she's one of these people that number one, the camera does not make the photographer. And I know, you know, this and your audience probably knows this. She can shoot with, we used to have like a digital camera that was like a two megapixel back in the day. Mm-hmm. She with like an iPhone, you know, like the first iPhone that ever come out. Mm-hmm. She was taking a picture, like anything she, her iPad, her iPad rivals my, you know, pro DSLRs. So she's taught me different things. She's taught me composition. She's taught me patience, mm-hmm. um, you know, waiting for that shot. And so I've learned a lot of that. And that's, that's been a real asset to me. So you have to have, there is a talent in, in you in whether or not you know you have it or not yet. So that's what the photography thing. I think I had the talent for it. I just didn't let it out. I didn't recognize that it might be there. Right. And what I did with her encouragement, with her kind of giving me the, um, the tools of the trade, so to speak, I used to go when I would, like, so I build websites for a living now. That's what I do. 
uh, have my own, our own video uh, multimedia company and we build websites. And I would go to customers would say, okay, so you're building my website. Can you take some pictures of my photos or my uh, products and things like that? I'm like, oh, sir, you know, I'll build your website, but my photos suck. Mm. And then I would say to myself, you know, first, that's another tip I'll share to people. Uh, whatever your talent is, don't say you suck. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know? So first, okay, yes, I'll take your money, but I suck. That's right. right. So, so if we're a musician, right, we're, hired, we're going to the, down to the bar and you say to the <laughs> bar, Hey, hey, Bob, thanks for hiring me today. By the way, we suck, but we can't wait to get on the stage at 10 p.m. Are you excited to have us? <laughs> right? So I, I made kind of uh, not one of these New Year's resolution kind of things, but I, I made a promise to myself once that, you know, uh, Sandra Nocturnal Butterfly kind of got, got this talent going inside of me of photography. I was like, okay, I'm going to say this. I'm going to stop saying that I suck. And the minute I stopped saying that I, I suck taking pictures, my pictures actually come to life a little bit. I was looking back at them after. I was like, wow, that's actually okay. I, I, I mean, not good or not even great, uh, not even good, but it's like, okay. And then you could say that's okay. Then you're like, okay, now I have a little bit of confidence. And then you get to the good point and you can actually say, okay, yeah, I, I feel comfortable taking, you know, let's say $20 or $40 or whatever it is, maybe $100 for a shoot. You, you, until that point, unless you can believe it's good, it's not fair for you to take the money from the client you know, for, and it's the same as a band. If you don't think you're good enough, if you think you're horrible, you really shouldn't take the money. No, I agree. That's very good advice. Oh, sorry. Somebody turned, told me to turn my mic a bit, but I was worried I was going to red line there. I don't want to cut out too much. I'll just try to speak a little louder. No <laughs> Always I'm getting help from the audience. Yo, you're coming in fantastic, actually. You sound sound amazing. Great. Um, what mic are you using, by the way? Because I know people are going to ask that at some point, so I'm going to cut to the chase on that sure. one. Sure. I, I, I did a video on this a while back, too, because I like two of them so very, very much. Now, you, you mentioned Rode earlier in the show. Uh, Rode is, has been a great company to work with. I'm using the Procaster um, that I'm speaking through right now. And for those of you that watch the, uh, your show that are audio buffs, um, it's a dynamic microphone, kind of like what you'd have in a bar. You know, like it's the type of microphone where you have to be right on the microphone and I used to use, I can probably bring it over here a little bit more, try to bring it into the frame. Can you see that there? Yep. Okay, that is that is an NT1. That's what a common one used from Rode. It can be used for miking a guitar. Amplifier can be used for miking an acoustic guitar. It's great, great for voiceover. Those are condenser microphones. And the advantages of those is you'll get that big radio voice, you know, that kind of deal. Um, but, it, you know, if you're getting some clickies on the key, you know, on your keyboard and things like that, it's going to pick up everything. Yeah. So I wanted to, because in the live environment of a talk show that we do here, um, you know, sometimes I'm either typing back to uh, someone in the chat, which I don't do too much. I don't really get a chance to do that. Right. Uh, a nocturnal butterfly, my better half does that, but she'll be texting me notes and things like that. And if I'm typing, I don't really want that to be a nuisance to people listening. So the road procaster, I, I love it to death and it's overall, it wins for me as the, um, the better of the two for the need. Right. That's very yeah. cool, though. And that's like, I mean, that's a great partnership to be in with is Rode. I mean, you go, that's uh, that. Yeah, that's been going on with you for a little bit now, and they've been good to you. You, you have nothing but good things to say about them. And we're going to touch on that. I don't want to go too far into that part yet because we'll go into that after about endorsements and that because I know people have some questions. Yep. Um, I think the next thing people want to do, are you comfortable in playing a little bit? I can actually, because I'm, I'm, I, I am going to do that and I'm going to sh share with your audience. Um, I'm one of those guys. And I've said this, I think I said it last night on the stream where you guys popped in. Um, I've worked in music retail. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've done the NAMM convention. I've done all these little conventions and things like that as well. Two smaller ones in Canada. We had MIAC, which was, you'd probably remember that. Oh, lots of them. We were the big, kind of the big event at MIAC. We were the 180, 120 by 80 booth every time for tractor trailers. So I remember it quite well. <laughs> Yeah, you'd be big there for sure with uh, with the companies that you worked for. I know who you mean. Um, but I'm, I'm one of those guys that doesn't like to play in the store. If I go to a guitar center, I don't pick up a guitar. When I worked in the music store, I, I would always refer to myself as Michigan J. Frog. You remember the cartoon from Warner Brothers? <laughs> you know, I you haven't heard up. that in years. Yeah, that was me because, you know, I'd be I'd be right ready to shred on the guitar and then the customer would walk in and I'd go, Ribbit. And I'd say, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm very subconscious about my playing. Like I, I just don't, I don't feel comfortable, but on my channel, because of the, the people that come in, um, it's a very nice, I feel like I'm playing with, um, a, a family, right? right? So I feel like I'm, they're not, you know, they could be judging from a distance, but for the most part, they're not. Yeah. Um, so I, but long story short, I'm not comfortable in playing a lot. And I thought, you know what, you offered me to play and I was going to, I was going to say, no, I got a couple songs queued up. I'll do some backing tracks and I can play with them. 
Uh, uh, I feel relatively comfortable, so I can probably give you a couple, uh, kind of a nice ballad and then a nice kick in the pants kind of rock song. Because I wasn't going to say anything, but then I seen you come in with your role because I was not going to mention Boo about it. I was going to be as off, and then I said, okay, well, he must have given a bit of a lead onto it. So, I, But the ball is in your court. I'm like you. I went to, and I haven't played a lot. I was taking, a, I'm taking a medication that sometimes causes like a tar- type of arthritis. Ooh. So I'm, you know, getting more rusty and I don't get to play every day. And I was just getting back into it. But I, I'm like that. Like I I say I'm like a baby walking until I realize I'm walking. And that's when somebody walks in the room and then all of a sudden I can't pick anything anymore. And yeah. I was playing uh, Still of the Night, which I love that riff is one of my favorites. That's yeah. my dirty little secret. When we do the wheel shout out night. Okay. A half hour before we go on, I always listen to it three times in a row. That's what kind of gives me my oomph because that night takes a lot out of me. I'll always <laughs> listen still the night three times in a row. <laughs> That's what, no, I love, love voice. I got to see them with Steve I one time back at, whenever that was in the very early 90s. Oh. 96. I don't know the year, but that was very cool. The only time I saw them, and obviously a big fan of Steve Vai, which was, um, you know, was a real treat as well, too. That would be an awesome show. Uh, we can even talk about that. What was your first concert? That is a good one. Um, that would probably have been, as far as big bands, probably Van Halen, uh, be Cobo Hall, 1984. I think it was Cobo Hall. Oh so I've God. seen Van Halen every year since since 84. And then I, probably my next one would have been right around, right around the same year would be Kiss. Um, oh. and that, was, that would have been uh, maybe a slightly older. Whenever the Kiss Dynasty was, whatever year that was, I don't remember the year, but I saw Kiss. And then, unfortunately, you know, as a teenager, you know, some of the things that we go through as teenagers, I don't remember some. some... <laughs> you got a couple of those shows, too. Yeah, They're yeah. not vivid memories in, in, in any sense uh, of the word. <laughs> well, I can just go through a few. I, I certainly can't go them in order. But, um, you know, like uh, I remember seeing like uh, Ozzy. Uh, I remember seeing the, the, the Monsters of Rock with Van Halen was great because nice. you're getting my band bill. Uh, you know, got uh, Dawkins, Scorpions, Kingdom Come, Van Halen, uh, Metallica. Um and then, you know, in my older age, we'll, we'll kind of do the flip side. I'm, I'm enjoying living through my son's life. He's only 12. Right. And discovering bands like Gorillaz, mm-hmm. uh, you know, bands that I would never, ever, ever probably, you know, entertain. And I love it. And I think deep down inside, you know, some of the, some of the modern stuff I lived through him and the older stuff of the rock that I grew up with, it's kind of shaping me a little bit as uh, an individual and maybe a musician somewhat, too. Definitely, and I think that every musician craves that their whole life is to expand, and now you got your son is kind of introducing you to it. Uh, one thing about working with a lot of musicians I find you learn over time, it's not the musicians that have a very narrow scope. They're actually all over the place. It's more the fans. Mm-hmm. The fans are very, oh, yeah, I'm not listening to country, or oh, I hate that rock. But the musicians are into anything you throw at them. And they, they almost light up when it's something they haven't heard, no matter how basic or advanced seems to be always a spark listening for that next thing that's going to inspire them. It could that's be, right. And you know, as a guitarist, it could be just a little lick, a bend. It's like, oh, play that back, play that back, play that back. What did he do there, you know? <laughs> that's right. If I could offer a piece of advice, too, if you ever get a friend that calls you and say, hey, I've got an extra ticket for Band X, you know, whoever it may be, and it, even if it's like a 1,000% out of your wheelhouse, um, you should seriously entertain the thought of going. Yep. Because there's been a few bands, you know, well, Girls is one that I thought, okay, well, I'm going just for my son. And um, when I went there, you know, I was like, thank God I actually, you know, decided to go on this. Right. Um, you know, so always take a chance because live music is where it's at. And sadly, it's a dying, um, you know, thing. It's just a dying art. Just like photography is a dying art. I've talked about this with uh, one of our, my friends, Carlo. You mentioned him in the uh, shout out there. Yeah. Great photographer. We, we capture all these photos and they go to die on our hard drives and our phones. Mm. They never go into albums anymore. They don't get printed on paper. That's and true. uh Music is that same way too. People like, okay, well, I can't make your show, but I'll watch it tomorrow on YouTube. Mm-hmm. A really bad bootleg of it, and then they're going to say, "Oh, you sound horrible," um, you know. So you can't win for losing when it comes to music. True. But go out, take it, take a chance with your friends when they ask you to go to see a show, and you might just be a new fan of a new brand. I think of that when uh, Lady Gaga did her piano version of uh, "Edge of Glory" on Howard Stern. Okay. And everybody is just blown away. And no, you know, and that's one that was kind of at that time they were kind of giving her all the dish. She's just another this and that. But the stripped down version of the piano and and Xenia called me in at the time. She's like, "You got to hear this because our daughter's young. She's only eight, but she was getting the tail end of it." Oh my god! I, mm-hmm. I listened yeah. to it to keep her happy. But I played it and I'm like, 
Like, this girl has talent up the yin-yang times 10. Like, I mean, you know, you can't hide behind a piano and, and raw vocals. There's no, I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it all. A lot of people look at me as the rock guy. I don't like anything outside of that. I've already admitted that I love the gr uh, gorillas. I always, I don't want to say the gorillas. I want to say the gorillas because you want to say, like, the hooers. Right. My boy, it's gorillas. Um, but I, I, I do appreciate Lady Gaga's music a, a thousand percent. There's no doubt about that. Yep. I mean, there is manufacturing in the world, but I mean, not everything looking manufactured is and vice versa. And today, most things are going to look manufactured. Yep. That's just the packaging that comes with the times, you know? That's right. The technology that we have today. I mean, look at any rock band, like uh, another show we saw recently, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, mm. a band that I never really gave full appreciation uh, in, the, in, the, in their heyday. Right walk away from that and you like the visuals and everything like you really feel that you're in you're in another world for and a three-hour show too by the way definitely yeah. um, and that's the point you're probably like around more in my age group where we kind of were a bit against the the whole uh, nirvana scene we'll call it for lack of a better term because it was killing what we thought was our music but really our music kind of had to die a bit it was yep. getting it was getting too saturated i get that you know but yeah, at the time I was still holding on to the glory days, you know. <laughs> I know, and me too. And that's why a lot of people though they kind of accuse me. They'll say, "Oh, dude, you're stuck in the '80s." I'm like, honestly, in, in my opinion, uh, if I'm going to be stuck in a, in a time period, the '80s are great. You know, I I, I love. It. I mean, you watch back some of these movies and things like that, and the hairdos and the clothing stuff. Okay, well, that's not necessarily not necessarily cool. But I'm I'm a fan of rock guitar. Yeah. And. I like all these guys like the, of course, Eddie Van Halen, the Yngwie Malmsteen, the Steve Vai, the Paul Gilberts, you know, uh, the Vito Bradas. Right. I mean, Nuno Betancourt, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. So, I mean, 80s is a great place to be. Vito Brada is one of my all-time favorites, and I watched him open for Ozzy, and them open for Ozzy was the No Rest for the Wicked tour. Okay. In the Verdun Auditorium. And, I mean, Vito Brada did, uh, you know, it's just like he was – thinking what he was going to have for supper playing these amazing solos you know he's you love him and, and you're so jealous of him at the same time so effortlessly you know so so much grace in the way he played and i found out later on along the solos was like his first and second takes that were using most of it. i know some people they make it so easy that and it's frustrating because you know it makes you just want to give up your instrument and go drive a cab or something yes. <laughs> exactly i was struggling over a song when i was younger and one time my friend told me that was teaching me guitar the solo, you know, and you're trying to break it down in your head. And he finally put it in reason. He said, you got to remember the guy that wrote that solo. He's been playing for the last 15 years, nonstop, 16 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Don't beat yourself up so hard just because you're not picking up what he's doing identically. You know, you're going up against something pretty from pretty stiff competition. Learn That's it, right. But don't give up the music, the instrument because of it. And even if Vito Bada was sitting uh, with you at, and let's say you're sitting around doing some jamming and you come up with a little riff, even as talented as he is, he'd probably say, okay, what are, what are you doing there? Because it came naturally to you. That's right. He, he's going to kind of find out what position you're in, what key you're in. Um, so what comes naturally to this person over here is something that we have to learn, yes. um, you know, but it's, it's just the way, the way it goes in, in life or anything. Well, that's right. Exactly. It ties back into arts. As you're saying before, I mean, it's the same as an artist with a brush stroke or, yeah, you know, uh, uh, the list goes on and on. And mm. I was just going to bring one last point because you said about you know, like music and taking for granted. When I worked at Jam, there was uh, the the manager of the Korg division, and one time I made a joke about um, uh, Duran Duran because he became an, their bassist became an endorsee for uh, Mark Bass. Okay, and I forget the joke I made or something like that. And he's like, "Man, you go back and listen to their early music, and you listen to the progressions, the bass playing, and that and their music." Yep. Wow, did I ever miss the boat on that when I was younger? <laughs> yeah, it for sure. And and a guitar playing as well, too. I mean, there's another band, too. Like sometimes, you know, so we, we, we kind of feel pre peer pressure from some of our friends yeah. because you know, in high school, if you if you listen to metal, you were teased. Yeah. And God forbid if you said well, you like Duran Duran and bands like that. Um, but I'm telling you, that stuff is on my iPod. I have an iPod that would, one of these days, I'm going to print out or not print out, but make a graphic of what's a shuffle on my playlist. And people are going to be very, very surprised. Yeah, I've got stuff from, you know, Voivod to Katy Perry uh, to to Duran Duran. Of course, every ba Van Halen bootleg there is. Yeah. But I mean, it's so diverse. Yeah. I, I kind of have to. And 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 that's a fun thing to do. Take your iPods and put them on shuffle. Don't listen to your favorite playlist all the time. Put it on shuffle because and try your best to challenge yourself not to hit skip. Yes. You might get something that's like ah, don't skip it, and then you'll appreciate it. That is so true. I love that.
Mm. I tell you, I love this guy already. <laughs> <laughs> you are and, uh, and we are talking in a chat about that too. That it actually pertains <coughs> not only right. to music but to a lot of other things in life too. You kind of gotta c- have that open mind uh, attitude to gain uh, more you know, knowledge and experience and and to have more insight uh, uh, about life in general. You know, whatever it would be uh, in in your work or food or uh, you know ideas. Just just open mind in general seems to have uh, more. Uh, successful paths uh, through the life as well. I'm trying to get better at that when it comes to food. And this is a really funny story that Nocturnal Butterfly will laugh at. Um, she's an amazing cook. I mean, I, I gained some weight when I met her for sure. <laughs> uh, and, and she'll always say, and, and I get mad at my son when I'll, we'll, we'll have something in the kitchen for, for supper or whatever. And he'll say, he'll smell it. I don't like that. And then she's, and she'll be like, we didn't try it. And she, I'm the same way. She'll make something because she's turned to a very, very, um, uh, I th- think they call it a whole food plant base. I hope they, uh, I hope I got that right. Uh, Cause she got very sick for a while and she had to switch to her diet okay. and well, she make all these different things. And I'm like, Oh no, I, 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 I won't like that. And she's like, how do you know you won't like it? And I, I feel like I'm this, this little four year old kid <laughs> you know, like, no mom, I'm not going to eat it. Um, so I need to adopt that kind of adapt that kind of thing that I do with music where I try to embrace, you know, all different styles um, even being a one trick pony, still embracing it. I need to do that with food too, because I know there's a world of food out there that I'm missing. Some I may not like, I'm, I'm some I won't like, I know that for a fact, but there's probably some beautiful gems that I'm missing that I haven't tried because like, I've never yet, believe it or not, I've never eaten real good sushi and I want to try it, but I want to go to a sushi bar with someone. I don't want to, I don't want to have somebody, Hey, I know a sushi bar and they take me down this back alley and they take me to this place where I get like the food poisoning and blow up into a balloon. <laughs> so I want to try that sometime, you know, I'm going to California another week. I'm not going to try it there because here again, I can't get sick and I don't want someone to play a practical joke on me, well, yes. but I, I want to try to embrace some of these things that I haven't tried before. Yeah, she's a very smart woman. That's right. You gotta, you, <laughs> how do you know exactly? Yeah. I think uh, my husband could learn a lot about uh, that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I about know food and open mind. <laughs> I, I kind of knew that was coming. <laughs> I think yeah. guys, us guys in general, um, yes. I'll be the first one to say that we've got to listen to our, our significant others a lot more. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. thank you. <laughs> and, and it is true. I find in general more women are, especially with food and stuff like that, they're more. Um, more adventurous with it and stuff like that. We tend to be a little more leery. I don't know. I like, it's like, well, if this worked before, if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of thing. That's right. Uh, well, she knows I'm quite open to it too, because she'll make some things like she'll do some things where she's got, you know, recipes of in her mind. Uh, she's written down. She's got other things that she'll just kind of pull out, but she's It's like, okay, it's like guitar playing. If you practice and practice and practice, if you get called up for an improv jam sometime, all those days of woodshedding will come to save you. Yes. Well, all her days of woodshedding in the kitchen save her too. And she's just going to improvise. And she's made some really healthy soups one day. And then I, I saw after, you know, she posts on Facebook, she goes, I didn't tell him what was in it and he ate it and he liked it. You know, and then I'm like, no, I didn't like it. You know, she's saying I I shouldn't have liked it. I didn't like it, but she's like, you're lying because I just you ate th- three bowls of it. <laughs> <laughs> no denying there. Oh my God, yes. Yes, yeah. I tend to do that too. I sometimes mm. make, I, especially baking, I bake something in it and they don't even know what's in there. And then like days after, I'm just <laughs> revealing what was inside. <laughs> you know, no, I'm not going to eat it anymore. Well, no. it's it's gone. It's not there anymore. Obviously, you loved it. So It's mind over matter. If we're told something, yes. you know, that's one of the things. If, we're, if, if you're told this is Coke and you only like Pepsi, you know, uh, oh, you know it's horrible. But you can really subliminally subject change your person's perception before you even have it yes. like it's like uh, advertising is the worst for it because they're cramming this down you must like this and if you don't like this you're considered you know out of the click mm-hmm. it's, it's it's so sad you, more people need to form their own opinions and use your senses use your taste use your your ears you know which is a hard thing a hard sell today when we live in the most branded era in the history of the world is right now Yep. It's never yep. been more pushed in everybody's faces. And it, it doesn't matter whether you're young or old or whatever. There's always a ton of brands gauged towards your, your demographic. And sadly, I mean, it's not even TV like it was for us as kids. Mm-hmm. You know, we have our commercials that would come out and it would be the latest propaganda for a new product, whatever. But now TV is the last place you see this stuff. We're surrounded by ads. You know, I've, I work in advertising and I know what it's like. You know, um, we, we see ads everywhere we go. We see them on our phones. We see them on social media everywhere. We can't get away from them. They tr- they follow us now with tracking ads, um, you know, and uh, um, it's just targeting type things, that kind of stuff. 
So we're advertising is pushed down our throats and it's so hard for the general public to, to form their own opinions anymore. Well, I think I like this brand of jeans because yep. it seems like everybody does. Right. Yep. And, so yeah, it's kind of sad too. And they're very uneducated on why they like them. Yeah, they can't. And and that's something I think we need to ask people too. Um, like one of the, and one of the things I'm sure you guys uh, on your show would never talk about, or it's probably best to not talk about is politics and religion. Mm-hmm. Um, no, and I don't either. And I won't get into that. But if someone says, I don't like uh, this politician. Okay, that's cool. Or I don't like this band. Let's go that way. I don't, I don't like this band. Why? I don't know. No, give me a reason. Like, yeah. that's cool that you don't, but give me a really good reason. Or do I don't like this person over here. Yeah. That's cool. That's your opinion, but why? Yeah. And if, unless you can give a really good reason, then you know your argument is is really null. Well, that's a very good point. Actually, what you bring up into that, and that's kind of the way the world works now is just kind of a yes, a nay, or yay. Yeah. Without very much thought into it, it's it's semi robotic. You know, whatever sold to you, kind of. Remember. Bob doesn't like him, so I shouldn't like him too. Yeah, yeah that's one. That's a great one. <laughs> Gary know. Holt said that he's taking you to sushi after Nam. Oh. Uh oh, okay. Well, the Gary Holt, I'll trust. I will trust him. <laughs> because uh, he he uh, is a, uh, a close personal friend of Gary Kramer, who we're going to be staying with for a couple of days at his estate. So I know uh, Gary Kramer has probably had the best sushi in the world. So um, I might have to bring Gary Kramer as a, as a safety quarterback just in case. Uh, but I trust Gary Holt as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you're staying with Gary Kramer. That's uh, that's going to be pretty interesting. And this is your first Nam. No, second NAM. I was there in 2017. Okay. Uh, and then Nocturnal Butterfly got sick, uh, pretty sick for an entire year, which was a real scare for us. And so we, we oh. posted last year. She's doing great right now. Fantastic. Good. A whole new lifestyle for us. So we're there again this year. And next year, we're going to, the family will go, the three of us. Mm-hmm. But oh, she's that's nice. Her family here as well, too. And, um, but yeah, it'll be, this is going to be a big one this year. A lot of new products that we're going to be seeing. And then, of course, you know, I, I don't, it's, it's kind of a shame because NAM is almost getting kind of trumped. By and I don't mean Donald Trump. I mean um, <laughs> it, it's getting you know uh, overshadowed by this Kramer event. But that's something that yeah. you know this is just the nature of the cards. Um, Gary wanted to come on the show on my Kramer Corner show, and first of all, when I heard that, I was very honored. And I don't want to give away too much because some of this is going to come out of our script for the, the documentary that we're filming. But you know, it was one of those things where you know it's going to be much more advantageous um, for our audience for to me to be there and film as opposed to you know what's a webcam going to see right right definitely. and so yeah so that opened up a whole new dialogue and uh kind of a landscape of where we're going to go with this so you know it's going to be we'll be traveling back with him from nam for four and a half hours literally like we're going to be tra- driving with him so i'm going to put a gopro in the windshield and we'll catch some candids you know and uh that kind of stuff and then oh i tell you i've got a mandatory as you as you guys as videographers i won't say what i'm doing but i have a mandatory shot list already that i need to capture and then i've got my b-roll stuff that i'm planning on doing but there's mandatory steps that i am not going to miss and it, it's going to be something i think we'll probably turn into like about a four or a six part mini series on the channel wow that sounds really interesting mm-hmm. that that's and i mean your channel is just getting better and better that way and you can tell your respect for your work into it it really is and these kind of adventures these uh projects are really the next step i think in the evolution of your channel i mean it, it's got so much going for it already and I think it's going to become more like a Bible in the next two years for people that are into rock. I really see that as I go through it. I think it's only just scratched the surface of what it's going to be. Thank and you. Are you looking, for, do you love like a six, 12 month? You don't have to tell us what you're doing. But yeah. Do you look at it as like maybe like a three, six and 12 month plan of where you want it to go? Yeah, we 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 have several goals in mind, and and we're, we'd like to change visually. And if you look at our our channel, you know, both from the shows, there's been evolution in looks. Mm-hmm. And we're we're I'm not going to say when or where, but we are making some changes again. And because you, you know, like I say, you got to look at yourself. You don't worry about what's going over here. You almost need to kind of wear blinders sometimes and not be. If you sit and focus on what this guy's doing over here and this girl's doing over here, there's there's waste of opportunities what you could be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we have a little bit of, well, I shouldn't say we have a little bit of pride. We have great pride in what we do, but we want better. You know, we want better sound. We want, and that's road has helped with that. We want better visuals. We want better lighting. But now we want to change our, our backdrop. When I say backdrop, I don't just mean hang a screen. I mean change our overall set. That'll be something coming this year. Um, the the other shows that we run that are subsidiary shows, it's so funny because um, I, I can't take credit for doing those other shows. It's so funny. I had this dream one day. Um, 
I'm going to go back about six months. I woke up at six o'clock in the morning and I had this, woke up in this dream. And I said to Sandra, I woke her up and I said, or she was already awake. I said, Hey, I just had this great dream. She's like, what, what, what is it? I said, I'm going to do a show on the walking dead. And, and she, she's looking at me laughing and I'm like, you know, my feelings were kind of hurt because she's laughing at me at six in the morning. I'm like, do I have bad hairs? My mustache. Blue? <laughs> you know? And uh, she's like, doesn't that sound familiar? And me being the, the idiot, she had to explain to me, she goes, remember when you first started your EVH show, you know, two and a half years ago, whatever, I said, you should do a walking dead show. And at that point I said, oh no, honey, I can't, I can't balance more than one show. And then, um, and I was like, your light bulb went off. You're right. You're right. So I said, okay, well, it's all your idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started it. And, and that was actually the, our fourth show, but I'm kind of going out of order. But the cool thing was, is it brought in a whole new demographic of people. So let's say, let's, you know, The Walking Dead, um, I, I think it has a fairly high uh, female um, uh, uh, audience demographic. So some of the women would come over and either their boyfriends or husbands or whatever, or, or girlfriends for that matter, you know, it's all over. Um, they would come over, maybe they're guitar players. So one person comes over to watch Walking Dead related content and all of a sudden their significant other is a guitar player. Now I got, so like, wow, so I got something for them and something for them to watch. And it was a blessing for me because number one, you know, um, the, the demographic, most of us, most of us guys that are doing these guitar channels, you know, our female demographic is like 0. 0.00002. <laughs> yeah. And it went from that to over 20%, like overnight. Wow. And same thing with the other shows that we do too. Like we bring back, we bring this show called Kramer Corner, which you talked about. And then we do Helix Hour. And it, here again, it's an audience that would maybe not, maybe some of these people in this one genre don't like Van Halen. So they might miss my show when it's a Van Halen theme show. Uh, and they come in from this one and it's been really, really good. So I do, that's another piece of advice. And I, I mentioned this on one of your chats one time on a show. You're, you're, I forget who your guest was, but um, the piece of advice I'll give YouTubers is don't do what you think is going to be a hit. Do, I mean, and that's another example. Um, people like, you know, they want to get a, a, a business license, a business grant, I should say, or a loan a grant in most cases to start up a business. I want to, I want to open a pancake house because I think pancakes house are going to be, the pancakes are going to be the bomb in my city. Right. And, and meanwhile, what you think is not necessarily the answer, you know, okay, now, first of all, do you like pancakes and can you cook pancakes? No, I hate them and I have no idea how to cook them. Okay. Well, you're in the wrong business. That's right. Yeah, that's 100%. Unless yeah. you got an endless, amount, endless amounts of money and you can hire the, the pancake chef and the, and the excellent business person. But get into YouTube, whatever you're good at. If you can, if you're uh, maybe a storyteller, maybe you're just a person who can tell stories, that's your thing. Narrate some poems on YouTube and, you know, do them live and then maybe encourage people to write poems and read their poems. Or yeah. if you know everything about the history of guitar or World War II aircraft or something like that, do that. Do what you're good at. And because nothing is more unbelievable than someone that's just BSing to get through something, you know, because your fans that will watch, they're coming there for a reason. They know this stuff. Even with Van Halen, I get schooled on Van Halen all the time. I'm not the annoying burrito when it comes to that. And I will learn from my fans. Right. But if you have a little bit of knowledge, then, you know, you're in the wrong game. You have to believe in what you're doing and you have to really enjoy what you're doing because it is, you know what it's like. It's work too. It is work. Oh. People don't realize it, and that's what happens. They'll look at something and, oh, well, they're doing good with that. I should do that. Well, you might not be cut out for it, and you might right. not realize just how much work is into it to get it like that. It is, and that's, that's where most people go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I never got into YouTube for money and never did. I got into YouTube. <laughs> this is funny. People think, did you get into uh, YouTube because you had a passion for Van Halen? No. I got into YouTube because I needed a place to store my videos. You know, I needed yeah. a dumping ground. Back in the day when I started it, I mean, it, I had like a – one gig hard drive. You right. know what I mean? Where am I going to put these videos from an, from an eight millimeter, you know, camcorder, put it, scan them, whatever, you know, import them, throw them up on YouTube. And it was literally a dumping ground, like a, a very fancy Google drive and our Dropbox, whatever. And then years, you know, I was in the band thing. We, we really pushed the band thing very, very heavy for about 12 years with the last band, excuse me. And um, when I decided to pack it in with the band, YouTube just happened to be there. And, Honestly, as, as the end of the career, you know, the, the attendance and shows, they, they stopped smoking in bars. So the attendance in bars started to, especially here in Canada, we were the first, I think, in, in North America to do that. And yep. once people can't smoke in bars, they don't drink. People aren't coming out as much anymore. The drinking and driving got really strict, you know, and I, which is a good thing. But yep. I mean, at the same time, you know, there are so many factors that was killing it for musicians. I just pulled the plug one day and I moved to YouTube. And, you know, on the I mean, even on a bad night, I'll have more people watching the show than would come out at the tail end of our career. And it was so nice because 
I could still be connected to the music uh, world very, very deeply. And uh, eventually when I was able to start interviewing some of the, you know, the people I loved as kids, you know, as a kid, famous musicians, I was still connected with them. And then as soon as I say, thank you, good night, I open the door and my family's right there. Sometimes I got a hot meal waiting for me or I go upstairs and, you know, that's, a first, that's literally the first thing I do after every single show. I'm communicating with uh, the better half nocturnal here throughout the whole evening whenever we do a show. And then, you know, because there's a delay on YouTube. So when I'm off the air, there's still 30 seconds. It looks like I'm still live. You know, she'll send me thoughts on the show. And then I go up, give a high, high, high fives, hugs, whatever, good show, bad show, anywhere in between. And my family's right here. And it's, it's just, I couldn't ask for a better life, really. Well, it is. Uh, we have uh, a guest we had on this fall, Doug to Naples. He's the one who created, I don't know if you remember the video game Earthworm Jim. Oh, I, I used to love that game. Yeah, <laughs> he's awesome. We had him on this fall. He was a guest of ours, and he became a TV exec and all the stuff. And he's back in YouTube. We happened to meet each other that way. And he's doing uh, his latest comic because he's a comic book designer, like uh, artist by nature, uh, is by okay. trade. And this latest one, he's doing an 80 page hand drawn one that he's got, well, a limited print. And he's going to sell it out of his garage and stuff like that. And he still has deals in the making. But he told me he's going to make more money off of these. And all of his artists are going to get all the, the, the fans are watching him draw them because every day he's online drawing the book that they're eventually going to buy. Oh, wow. And it's like he said, it's a whole new medium of like, you know, he can talk to the artist while he's drawing and uh, all the fans and answer questions and tell them why he's drawing the page such and such. And he he, he was like a kid in the candy story was so excited. Oh, about this. yes. Yes. You know? He's so uh, and like, you know, even talking with him privately, he was so like excited about building his channel and doing this all. And yep. it's so much more than than being on Netflix. And we're like, what? Because <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of the question, like why YouTube when you were already, you know, Netflix, the guy's pitched in front of Steven Spielberg, you know, he's on yeah. SpongeBob, all these amazing things. Well, YouTube is more as a better way to connect with the with the audience for sure. I mean, you could be on this, on the big screen, you can be on whatever like Blu-rays syndication and stuff like that. But YouTube, that's why I, I always love it for the artists because until they do these shows, they don't really a lot, a lot of them have never done these kind of things. They're used to doing like a four minute radio spot, fifteen minute radio spot. Yeah. And when they realize what it's like to connect with their fans in a different way, like most people feel like it's like they're sitting in the living room with them. Yes. So I can appreciate why he was excited. And I got to, I got to tell junior about that game cause he'll love it. And I think this, this is going to test my age, but I think that was on Sega Genesis. That's right. It was the was game, it? Of, the game of the year in 1994. Oh, okay. I'm, I want to go buy a Genesis now. I, you get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it opened up, he did the comic, which then it became the game, which then became the TV series. And that's what kind of opened up all these avenues for him and okay. stuff. And, as a side note, a little, how I met him was he was on a panel, and what he does is he's drawing, and at the end he just drops the link for the Hangouts in the chat and invites all these artists to just come up and talk to him. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, yeah, because it would be the same as us, like with guitar play. You know, it would be like uh, Satriani, you know, throwing the link out, the, you know, and, and just come up and jam for half hour, and he'll draw with them for three hours. They'll all be drawing stuff. He'll give them advice and stuff as he's doing his own thing, and no nonchalant, just talking I thought that was so mind-blowingly cool. That's very cool. Yeah, you just be dudes, you know, or you know. And when I say dudes, I I, I always say guys. I mean guys and girls. Uh, right. We're dudes, right? Just hanging out, talking shop, and and it's so relaxed. Yes. Yes. The boat, like these corporate things, all the lights and cameras on oh. you. You know, I, I like the low low key kind of thing, and that's why podcasting. Uh, someone someone I follow on Twitter the other day, you know, I said something along the lines of like, you know, there's only a million podcasts out there right now, and that might seem like a scary number. Um, it, and it's not, that's not a scary number. If you, if you got a story to tell and you think people are going to listen to it and you, you have some uh, I, the bottom line, if you have a story to tell, get a microphone and push it out there. The people will listen. We're, we're all living proof of it. Yes, most definitely. There's an audience for somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, we got people that ask us, you know, I'm going to want to live stream for the first time, but I'm a bit nervous. I'm like, well, if you put out a couple of videos, you got some subscribers, somebody showing up. Mm -hmm. So you're that's not right. going to be alone, you know, <laughs> even if it's one and treat that one like to the, uh, one million give them yep. everything you got you know and just start from there and there's always somebody who wants to listen to what you have to say a little tip for people that that are nervous with the camera you know i i'm not gonna i have it pretty much down i'm not gonna say i'm comfortable every day because you notice like running a live show like this you had some technical difficulties yep. when everything was great for you earlier today and that's the nature of the game because everything will work smooth until showtime and then something goes crazy that's right a very, very stressful thing for us as content creators live content creators because we, the show has to go on. And that's yeah. that's any kind of thing as well, too. Um, 
but you have to be so focused and be prepared for those things. But here's a tip. Um, if you're new to it and you want to go live, um, you know, these webcams, you know, I'm talking into a Logitech right now. And I've got these blue lights staring at me and they don't intimidate me like they used to. When they used to come on, it was like, ooh, you know, put some black tape, electrical tape over them. As long as you know, <laughs> you have an indication somewhere in your computer that, okay, you are live, just so you know, that can take away um, some of the, you know, the, the scare. Or I haven't done this, but I mean, you know, family is very, very important here to us here. Maybe it's a family portrait. Stick it on the wall behind you. And it looks like I'm looking at the camera, but I'm looking at a picture of kids or, or whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. And so just look past that. And meanwhile, you could be sweating bullets, but the, the audience doesn't know that. Believe in yourself. And, the, you know, the people in the chat sometimes are nervous too. They want to say something. Some, I'm sure you find people like, oh, I wanted to say something in the chat, but I was too scared. Yes. Yes. Even those people are nervous. So everyone's nervous together. Get that off the table early, yep. and um, I think everyone will have a good time. And then you've got your first show. You had five people watching the first time. Maybe you only had one person watching, but maybe they were glued to the whole thing, and they stayed the whole time. That's awesome because they're going to tell somebody, and you might have three the next time. You know, and, and just just focus on it. Be a little nervous. Don't sweat it. You know, there's no prize for us. We're not going to get a trophy or you know or whatever the things are. You know, as long as you have you walk away from it thinking you had a good time, and if the audience has a good time, great. That's right. 100%. And it goes right back to honesty and what you were saying a while ago. You know, uh, believe in what you say. And if you're a little nervous, people are going to understand that. They're not going to, they know it's your first time because they've already followed you. Mm -hmm. They're happy just to see you be up there. Like they, they admire what you're doing at that moment and not to be so hard on yourself. It takes guts. And, and you see, nine times out of 10, if you ever get any criticism, you know, of people, whether you're a guitar player and they come and criticize that, or if you're a painter or whatever, um, and, and they're watching a show because you're an artist not with a canvas. And so they say, you know, your trees are horrible, your mountains are horrible. And they'll say, if they're watching your show, you would think that they're a painter. So when you go to their YouTube channel, this channel has no content. And it's like, okay, but well, how can you criticize? I mean, at least show me your work. And then I could say, you know, well, I don't like your mountains, but I did like your water there. I love what you do with your water. Right. And then you, you could diffuse that situation. But usually the people that criticize the most don't have anything to show in, in return. Very much so. Very much so. That's a very good point as well. And then uh, we used to do a lot of drum and guitar clinics, of course, in a lot through uh, especially Digitech more than Washburn mm -hmm. and Pearl. And it was amazing. You go to the drum ones because I guess it's a physical act. You'd actually, first of all, you get more women at a drum clinic because it's more physical. There's more of a spectac uh, spect uh, spectacle to it. Yeah, yeah. But there was less great, but guitar one, I could hear them talking almost a t only about a tenth of the amount of people for a drum one would show up for a guitar one. And it was unbelievable, the nitpicking in that. Well, that was, why did he go to that scale? And that, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can remember that from the, from the band days. Because um, when you when you do, you know, tribute stuff, you know, you got the guys that are like right like this. And it's yeah. like, okay, mm -hmm. and, and God forbid, um, God forbid if you... You know, I could play a striped guitar, an Eddie Van Halen striped guitar uh, on on live show, and then I've got a few people waiting to, waiting to see me fail, and I could play the same thing on a guitar that looks like this with no stripes, not, no affiliation with Van Halen, and they'll say, you know, and I'm not saying everyone, but some people will say, oh, that sounded so that sounded so much better. It's like because you're judging me because, it, you know, it, it's the Van Halen guitar, right? right. And that, that could be anything, you know, it could be a car that you drive or, you know, we go back to that branding thing because Bob says this brand is better you're playing this other one you don't you know you're not doing it as well yeah the, i used to say it a lot i mean unless you're especially guitars like anything else unless they're american made i don't want to get in trouble so i'll not say too much of, yep. but a lot of things that you might think are competing against each other are made in the same factory and it's just yep. depends between a two-week span of when they change the dyes yep so it's not as much and i'd watch for pages on back then especially you know in the mid-2000s when everything was on some blog post the fights for weeks and i would love to just say you know what yeah i like brand x but i hate brand y meanwhile brand yeah. Y. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly you're talking about siamese twins well this, this is there's, there's a manufacturer over and uh, i think it's in indonesia or korea i, I hate to say i, I hate I, I don't want to say because i don't know for sure but i know it's over there at world music company i mean they make they make so many different people you know so many different manufacturers guitars you know they manufacturers will say here's our spec here's our blueprints we want it manufactured to this quality yep. here's Electronics, and they make them for four or five different people. That's right. Uh, you know, you really can't say you hate this brand. Uh, you have to be. You have to educate yourself first before you can make that honest decision. Well, that's it exactly. You can say I prefer one over the other if that's your, your, your just your likeness. But yeah, mm -hmm. be aware that that's not as different as you think it is from it for sure. Unless right. you go into the U.S. music or you know handmade, 
then it's yep. a different ball game. But beyond that, and that's the same in anything you pretty much will use in life. You're going to have that. The anything that's not costing a ton of dollars is most likely made in like three plants in one that's country right. that manufacture most of what you're using. And we see that a lot, you know, with eBay, a lot of times, you know, we could buy something locally here that would cost us, maybe it's like a, some kind of a part for a, a stove or no, I'll say a dishwasher, mm -hmm. you know, and we, it's going to cost us 75 bucks from the local, you know, appliance place, but we can order it from China, you know, for $5 and is okay. So first of all, you're probably going to end up buying four or five of those. Yeah. And a lot of times I find too, with some of these inferior priced things overseas, um, it's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with getting a bargain. Trust me. I'm, I've shopped for bargains too. But a lot of times these really, really cheap things you order, they they kind of prey on your stupidity because you order it and it'll take like six months to get here. You've actually forgot you even ordered it. Yep. <laughs> um, it may not show up. Yep. And then unless you contact them and say, I didn't get it, you know, they'll send you another one. You got to wait another six months. But that's kind of a racket some of these people will do because you just forget. Like I've ordered some cheap things for GoPros, like some uh, tripod mounts or GoPros. And then if it does show up, I'm like, holy cow, I got something in the mail died. When did I order this? Did someone, someone must have said, I don't remember ordering it. But, it, you know, you take it's taking a long time to get here. So shopping local is a lot of times, you know, like music stores, everyone in their next door neighbor now is ordering from the online, you know, big box places. Um, and nothing wrong with that. Like, you know, there's some places like your Sweet Waters and places like that, you know, you'll get a rep. You'll talk to the person. They'll say, hey, here's the serial number. Here's pictures from five different angles. But there's nothing quite like going to a mom and pop shop. And I really would say the mom and pop shops, kind of like where I used to work, like you you and I were talking about, you know, I can walk into that music store. I know this doesn't happen as much today, but I could say to my my friend who I made friends with at the store, hey, Bob, I'm using the name Bob a lot tonight. <laughs> I'm going to take home that um, that Kramer that you got over there. I got a, uh, I, I got my own case. I'm going to bring it home. I'll sign, I'll sign it out. Let me take it home for the weekend, play it through my rig. I love it. Come back. So okay, can we make a deal on this? I either I got a trade or I got cash, whatever. And you can't really do that today. But mom and pop shops are where it's at. So get into the shops and physically try these things. And if you're too scared to to play, well, take them in maybe a little uh, acoustic room somewhere and get away from where you're uh, you're bothered by it. Play it and then make more informed decisions and online. Because I've seen some things. People send me some pictures of some things they buy online. You know, the tremolo is like this high off the the bridge. Yeah. The neck the strings are like six inches, you know, off the neck. It's like Oh man, if you would have bought that from a shop, you know, you could talk to the the tech right there. Yep, hundred percent. I, I we were working when I was there was the big time when the online stores were really starting to make a presence, mm -hmm. and when uh, uh, Rock Band was coming out, mm -hmm. and we had I'm sat down with lots of dealers that were terrified of it, and it was I mean then the recession hit, and of course the 2008 crash, it yep. was like a firestorm. You know, it was too bad. <laughs> I knew of some music stores that went down, and it was hard to watch. But yeah. some were adjusting, and and unfortunately, in business, you're always going to have those forest fires, and it's got to clean out. You know as well as I do, in any hobby, and guitars is no exception. You had some guys that, well, they didn't make it in music, but they love playing an act, so they opened a store. It was just a natural progression. That's right. But it didn't mean they were good businessmen either, but there's some very good mom and pops that really learned how to work around this and really yeah. started pushing their service more, the after service, and, and they survived it and actually flourished from it. I'm hoping too that we see more of those with being the multi generation uh, multi generations where the kids will take it over, the grandkids will take it over. Yeah, you know we we lost a good thing with record stores. You know, like oh. that's something that we will never like. There's still some out there. Obviously, there's still quite a few. It's not as bad as what we think, but it's it's certainly not as plentiful as when we were kids. Yeah, and that's that's an experience, and it's there's nothing more fun than you know as an aspiring musician going into a guitar store. Maybe your very first time. And, you know, either taking one off the shelf or saying, sir, could you help me bring that nice looking Stratocaster down and looking at it and drooling over it? And then I get to play it. Yes. You know, it's not the same experience of clicking on, you know, a JPEG on, on no. the Internet. I'm certainly not knocking online sales no, no. all the time, but it's a real experience that you just have to be like you're there with your buddy. Even if he's like, you can't afford it, man. It's like, hey, I'm here. I'm in the moment, you know, whatever. Yeah. Oh, no. Like Steve's music store when it was here in Montreal, the original place. Like, I mean, that was a mecca. Yep. It was dingy, it was grungy, and that's what you loved about it. I remember I grew up in eastern Quebec in a very rural area. I mean, I did travel to Montreal. Mm -hmm. But once I moved here, and to go down there and feel the energy, and to feel like you were actually now a musician, because you were at Steve's Music Store. Yep. You know, you can't get that vibe, like you say, from any website ever. Uh, There's barely ever a Toronto trip that I make. Even when Junior and I went down to see Gorillaz, I said, okay, we're going to go down, we're going to go down to Queen, we're going to go down to Steve's. And it, it doesn't have the same impact to me as it did the first few times because, right. you know, 
it's, it's changed a lot and, and retail has changed a lot. So yes. it doesn't wow me like it used to. And no, no disrespect to Steve's. I mean, they got great stuff, No, no. Uh, but it's the wow factor. You, you go like to uh, go to the Niagara Falls a hundred times and it, it's eventually it's water going down a big hole, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. A lot of noise, you know, but it's, it's still cool. Um, but it's, it's one of those things you just have to experience. And junior, like I, I he was me going in there the first time, just looking around, like, you know, just bouncing around like a little pinball. He didn't know where to go. He was just bouncing from corner to corner. And you see the pictures like Eddie Van Halen up there and all the famous stars that would come through Toronto from the seventies all the way up to today. That's awesome. No, it is. It's an experience. It's a rite of passage. I guess you yeah, call it. That's right. Yeah. You have to cut your teeth in some of those stores. And the NAM shows like that too. When you first go down it's such an overwhelming sensation. I mean, you got 80,000 people, you got all these things going on. You got stars passing everywhere. You got just every instrument you can ever think of a hundred times over. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's bewildering at first. It, 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 it takes you a while. And it was hard for us because working on the corporate side going down, you're working in a very liberal medium, you know? So you, it, you're, yeah. it, it's hard to walk both because you're gushing at the same time. You got to still stay in your suit. You got meetings. Yeah, to going, yep. so. I, I learned from my first time and this is advice I'd give people that if they're attending, I have some friends that are attending this year for the first, for the first time. And some of them are just there to kind of experience the wow factor. Um, and you know, no other mission other than that. And that's cool because you want to go meet some celebrities. It's a place to do it. Yeah. Uh, but when I came back from Nam, um, in 2017, people are saying, Oh, what did you, what did you see? What did you, sh what did you film? Whatever. And I was like, I don't know. And I had to actually go through my video list because I didn't remember yes. you are burnt out. And I told Eric jr today, I said, cause we're, he's really excited to go. I mean, we're counting down the days. And I said, Nam is almost like a casino in a way too. Like, you know, everything, you don't see too many windows. So I said, one thing we're going to be doing quite often is we're going to go outside, get some fresh air, see the sunshine. Because if you don't, you don't have an, you don't have any idea of what time of day it is. We're already d dealing with a three hour jet lag, yeah. a time difference. Um, but we have an agenda and, you know, and it's, it's a jam packed agenda. We want to, one of the things we want to do, and I'm going to still try my best is he wants to see some of the, the landmarks that are in Grand Theft Auto, mm. you know, game, you know, cause right around where we are, there's a few that are within, a half hour drive that we can actually see, take some photos. But if we're, if we're able to see one, we're going to be lucky because we do have scheduled, um, you know, interviews and, and slots with these manufacturers and we're limiting ourselves. We're, we're smart about this where we're only going to do so many. Um, and if anything, if we have time after the fact, then we, that's what I call bonus hour right. where we can go, go, Oh, that's cool. Hey, Hey, so-and-so could we have 10 minutes of your time? You can trust your new product line, whatever. But I think by doing that in that realistic uh, approach, then we'll have some really, really good coverage. And then accidental discoveries. If you allow a time for accidental discoveries, you have a great time. But if you make yourself so, so thin, um, there's not going to be such thing as an accidental discovery because you're just you're focused on nothing other than your job. And it burns you out. You don't realize how much it is going between the booths and stuff like that. Sometimes 15 minute walks between there all day. You do because you've been there before. And yep. the first time you're not prepared for it and you think you can conquer the world until you get there and start doing it. And you realize it's a workout and it's very hard after it's done. It's a long oh, day. Yeah. Like, here's an example. Like Let's say I, like, I, I've got some slots. Let's say I book a, a Saturday. Okay, I'm going to go see um, you know Company X 12 o'clock on Saturday. I know technically, you know, all, all, you know, in my mind, I only need 15 minutes with this person. Uh, so I'm going to say 30 and I'm going to allow myself an hour. So, uh, you know, maybe 45 minutes. So I do the shoot. Hey, Bob, shake hands, whatever. Okay. Let's we'll go through the thing. Okay. That was great. And then, okay. Look at my, my uh, calendar, which everything's calendared out and I'm using the NAM app, NAM app as well too. It's like, okay, we got to be over at the such and such booth. That's on the ground floor across the other side of the building. That's literally about a 15 minute walk, 20 minute walk, yep. you know? So it's not as easy as what you think. No, everything looks easier on paper. Oh, I just got to shoot across there. That'll be a minute and I'll be there. It's not so easy. There's a ton of people to go through a, a maze to get through. You might, you might read to some buddies. I've been, you know, waiting to see you. You've been waiting to see them. Yep. And you, you, you can't be rude. You got to stop and talk to them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and sometimes it's people that you've been waiting to see and you just happen to cross paths. And so you like, you got to allow that extra time to, you know, like, okay, here's a good example. You know, it normally takes us 25 minutes to get to work in the morning. Then we get a snowstorm. It takes us 45 minutes. You got to allow that buffer because you never know what's coming, especially. Yep. <laughs> That's a very good point. It really is. It's going to be awesome. Like I said, I want to live vicariously through you. I don't know if you can see the screen. This is the first person. This is the first celebrity I ever got to meet was uh, uh, at the NAM show. The first celebrity was Michael Anthony. Oh, I don't, I don't have your screen open oh, at the sorry. moment. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. I have Michael Anthony up. Uh, I met him and uh, 
he was such a gentleman and I had a friend who loves him and uh, he was in Montreal. So like we got my camera recorded him saying happy birthday to him. Cause it was just, oh, that's way cool. He, he is a, he is, he's a sweetheart. Yeah. Uh, I met him a couple times in 1998 with, with the band mm. and with the coolest guy, you know, and uh, like, I mean, it's probably about the easiest going guy in rock and roll, very well respected by, you know, all, you know, all his peers. Yeah. Uh, I love him to death. And he, yeah, he's going to be there on Saturday at NAMM as well. That's going to be really cool. Yeah. He's, I, I mean, he was such a fundamental in the style of Van Halen, mm -hmm. the attitude, you know, he was that bike, not the biker side, but you know what I mean? Gave it that kind of rowdy edge. Uh, all that voice. That vo I, oh. I always say there's, there's four voices in, in Van Halen. Yep. And I mean by that is number one, you know, um, I love David Lee Roth. I'm a David Lee Roth guy. Yep. But before I, I want to give Eddie credit first, his voice is his guitar. Mm -hmm. David Lee his voice his voice alex van halen's voice is his snare drum and of course michael anthony um you know you arguably one of the best you know, pocket bass players um but his voice i mean without oh. that harmony that it just absolutely insane he could be the lead vocalist no problem yep. but we we need that david lee roth or if you're a sammy hagar fan you need you need that ringleader but um i'm really hopeful too that we'll see um a, you know a tour with uh, michael back you know just i i saw a tweet today uh, and it's not it's not to drum up rumors by any means, but it was from a source that I was like, wow, just with hashtags that they would normally never use hashtags uh, of this sort. It was David Lee Roth, Alex Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen, Michael Anthony, and the source that it came from. I was like, did you know what you just said? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because now you got it. You got some explaining to do, sir. I think my heart just skipped a beat. To be perfectly honest, <laughs> I, I heard you say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, I, I don't, I don't ever like to, you know, conjure rumors. I, I really hate it actually when people get their hopes up or when these media outlets say something. Mm. And I certainly don't want anyone to take what I'm saying out of context either. I know nothing when it comes to that. Um, I'm just as hopeful as the next person is. But I saw that today. I was like, well, that's the first time I've seen those hashtags and names and a sentence. And I, well, since hashtags. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and, and I mean, Xenia's first concert and my oldest son's first concert was both uh, Van Halen with Roth. That was their first one. Yeah. Great on. Yeah, different times, but yeah, the same show. Yeah, it was, was cool. Yeah. Well, Xenia was, uh, grew up in Latvia. And uh, when she was over, she said she had never seen like a big, big show and Van Halen happened to be coming in. And I'm like, OK, well, I know where we're going. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, it was crazy. Good. It yeah. was so good. Yeah. Well, uh, what, year, what year would that be? 2000, no, uh, um, 2000. Uh, 12. 12, I think. Yeah, 2012, yeah winter 2012. of 2012, yeah. OK, yep. So, yeah, so they're basically the, the reformation of the band Wolfgang playing bass with them. Yep, yep. yep. And That's the first, and the first time I went was when the first time Roth came to Montreal, like after the the breakup, their first time back, mm -hmm. and it was my son was ten, and uh, two of my other friends I grew up, and we both, we all three of us brought our sons for their first concert together. Now would that be Billy Sheen and C Vi and the band at the time? No, no, no. This was the first time Roth came back with Van Halen. This was the with first, Van Halen. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, okay. I think it was two thousand seven, maybe. Okay, yeah, yep, yeah, for sure it would be. I thought maybe you meant when he was solo there for a while. Oh no, no, I I've seen him there, but I see I seen him for Sky, uh, not Skyscraper, uh, Little Lane and uh, the one with Little Lane enough onto it. Okay, uh, the one that Jason Becker played guitar on. Yeah, I know that's a phenomenal story, and you you just got to talk to him, which, uh, you know, that is something that I think has got to be the most amazing thing in the world, like. Uh, that that guy is an inspiration whether you know take music right off the table you, you the world's best guitarist whoever that may be out there um can forget they're a guitar player when they're in the presence of jason becker or just you know thinking about what he is he's gone through and the inspiration like he, he's beat all odds you know i mean really he's every day he takes another breath he's beating the odds yeah. um and I, I get goosebumps just thinking about that man i mean he's so and when i had him on the show he's been on twice and the, the we're talking new year's eve at one time and he's like that's what she said, you know, you know, and I'm like, you know, I'm literally, I had to change my camera so I could cry for a minute, oh. you know, tears out of my eyes and go back and try to, you know, regain my composure. Cause you don't expect Jason Becker to come up with jokes like that. And, you know, he's, he's, he's uh, a real inspiration. Maybe for those in the chat that don't know who is Jason yeah. Becker, we can uh, just tell just a little bit. Yep. Uh, if you want to tell them just quickly sure. about Jason. Well, back in the day, you know, you had like the when the the um, uh, Mike Varney and Trapple Records and all these different, you know, uh, kind of uh, upcoming small labels that would become major labels to uh, introduce the world of shred guitar, you know, to the world, you know, like your Ingve Mom scenes, your your Paul Gilberts. I mean, uh, oh, the list goes on and on and on and on. But Marty Friedman and Jason Becker 
were like the Bobsy twins back in the day, you know, like the shredders, they, they look the same kind of deals, long hair, that kind of stuff. And uh, playing with the band Cacophony and uh, just all, all the different things they would do. You know, just brilliant, brilliant, like prodigies. They just absolutely amazing. And eventually Jason um, auditioned for and got the gig with David Lee Roth. David left the band. Uh, Van Halen did various, uh, you know, incarnations, as I just mentioned, you know, he's got, and when Dave left, he wanted to make a mark on the world. You know, I was like, you know, you know, screw these guys. I, I want to be the best band. So he hired the best bass player in the world, you know, at the time, Billy Sheehan, still an amazing bass player, uh, you know, Greg Bissonette on drums, Steve Vai on guitar. And then, you know, as you lose certain one of these guys, he's looking for the next shredder. And um, Jason Becker got the gig, recorded the album. And if, and I really encourage people to watch the, yes. the documentary that's been done on him, um, Not Dead Yet. And it's, it, sounds, it sounds sad when you think of the title. But he's not dead yet, and he's this, this guy's got a lot more to give us in life. He's just brought out a brand new record. Um, but again, take music off the table. He's got a lot more to give us. And he got the gig, and you see it throughout this documentary. He was starting to discover the ALS. Like he's walking down the street, and he's getting like a pain and a cramp in his leg, and he would kind of stumble a little bit. And, you know, he would just tell his mom, it's like, you know, you know, I'm, uh, his mom, I'm tired. You know, it's, it's all good, mom. Don't worry about me. And it got worse and worse and worse. He'd be playing, and, and the cramps would get into the hands thinking maybe it's like a young arthritis coming in and uh you know it eventually took him over in a very very like i mean quick it once once it's almost like you know when someone tells you you have uh you know six months to live then all of a sudden you only have two months because you just give up yeah. but he did give up the sad th the sad thing is he didn't get to fulfill his dream in the tour with david lee roth um but he's gone he's gone on to bigger and i know i, I know david lee roth would even say jason went on way bigger than he could have with me you know, with David Lee Roth, because he's he's accomplished things that on paper he, he can't. He's not supposed to accomplish what he's done. Yep. He's defeated mm -hmm. all the odds. So I mean, that I, look him up if you if you haven't seen Jason Becker, just Google that film. It's available for rental on all these online sites, whatever. Um, pr could be on Netflix. I don't know, but you know, YouTube you can pay for it and watch it. It's a, it's a great documentary, and you will you will cry your ass off. Oh, watch. It's you heartbreaking. Know. It's heartbreaking story. His thing, he was losing so much strength from the disease already. Just to record the rest of the album, they had to keep lightening the gauge of the strings and everything else and all that. It was, it, it, it's a triumph story, but a triumph with the most painful way to triumph. And I, yeah. it, it, it's you got to see it. You really, I'm going to post it sometime. I'm going to put the link yeah. for everybody. You really can't, at the end of the day, you can have a really bad day at work. You, your boss might be a real jerk and come home, or maybe you're in tech support and you're just like, you know, just drained. You can't come home and say you have a bad day after you're watching that movie. You're going to say, okay, well, you can still have a bad day but learn how to deal with it because, you know, you want to talk about bad days, you know? Yeah. It's the worst of the worst days. Yeah. Um, you want to take a couple of questions, hon? Um, well, uh, people have been very careful listening to everything that you guys uh, have been talking about. Uh, yeah, just kind of contributing more yeah, the questions. Yeah, I see that because everybody's having a good job. But I love it. I love it, actually. It's such a great conversation going on. Uh, uh, we had a hike with Mike uh, asking uh, what recent guitarists uh, from the last five or ten years do you like? Okay, that's that's a tough one because I, I go back a lot. Um, and this is going to sound really, really funny because I wouldn't look at this person um, um, as a guitar hero, but I'm I'm in love with uh, Greta Van Fleet. And uh, 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 Kizka, is that the last name? Uh, Jake? Is it Jake, the guitar player? I don't know. If, 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 I guess that's going to answer this person's question a little bit better. For a young guitar player coming up, uh, one to watch for sure. Um, I really wish I was more prepared for that one, but I would. I think that'd be a good, honest answer, Jacob Durabs. Awesome. We, we just got a bad buffer with YouTube, unfortunately. I hope everybody, guys, if you're buffering, please just hit the F5 button. If you're on Mac, Command R. Yeah, it just dropped a ton of people at once. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to cut in. Just while everybody else is here, yep. I keep hitting. Yeah, that's why when I was working behind the scene, I seen it going down. I was watching the analytics. We are I'm all seeing asleep. Better they're saying back better now. They're saying so that's good. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I missed the last part because I was freaking out here on the side watching this because I got the. Oh, I know. I'm. I like that too. Sometimes you know something will come in one ear and go out the other, and you're trying so close to pay attention, but there could be a dis an impending disaster, and that <laughs> impending disaster has to take priority for a moment. Yes, well, I, I, you are very understanding. You've been down this road many times. I'm not having problems all the time, but I mean, you doing yeah. all your live streams and stuff and interviews. So I'm glad we have you on that understands that. Um, I was also going to say, who has been your top three, would you say? You're, I know everybody asked that question. You can be whatever you want to say, but the top three of guitars all of all time. 
in guitar. Yeah, and you can divide it into a subcategory if you want to do three and three or something like that. Whatever's the easiest way for you to answer that. Okay, because I'm a rock guy, I'm gonna have this. Is gonna sound very stereotypical, but I, I I can live with this answer. I'm gonna say, okay, and I, I might have to bump one out of this one. Okay, so Eddie Van Halen, Joe Satriani, and it's gonna be. And this is two guys in complete left field and right field: Paul Gilbert and Steve Ray Vaughan. Mm. Uh, and I think Paul Gilbert would not be offended if I said Steve Ray Vaughan. I, as a matter right. of fact, I know Paul Gilbert would not be offended because I remember when Paul's on the show, he says, you know, I would love to just play a blues lick and really get a nod from a blues player. That's what he said to me. And I said, Paul, you, if you played something, a blues player is going to give you a nod for sure. Yeah. So I say for the, the, the mark on the world, Steve Ray Vaughan um, with Paul Gilbert, they right in, right in the same area, but I'm going to go Eddie Van Halen, Joe Satriani, and uh, Steve Ray Vaughn. And I'm not saying any one is better than the other because I think I think Joe Satriani does some stuff that's kind of technically much different than Eddie Van Halen, and in maybe in some ways, don't flame me, Van Halen fans, somewhat better than Eddie in some ways. But at the same time, Joe's going to say I can't play what Eddie's playing. You yeah. know what I mean? No. And Steve Ray Vaughn, you just felt what he's playing, and he, Steve Ray Vaughn was one of those guys where he could play one note. And then he could sing three notes, and and the one note was just as effective as what he sang in three notes, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I agree. Um, he did on Austin City Limits when he played Crossfire. Yes, I get such chills to this day. It's almost like the first time I've ever heard it again. Every time I hear it, yeah. I I cannot get enough of that version. That the feeling, those heavy gauge strings, like you know, three quarters of the way up the neck and bends, and that I mean. A masterpiece would be an understatement for it, you know. And I mean, he's done many great songs, but that's probably my favorite, uh, favorite thing of his that I've ever heard. Like it's so. That one and the Elma Combo, uh, mm. you know, another club, you know, here in Canada. Um, you know, that's another one of my favorites as well too. Like you just, you, you see the sweat like literally flying off of him. Dredge. You know, basically the the White Hendrix. You yep. know it, it, what it was and. And obviously, the, in, in Jimi Hendrix, you know, I honestly, I should have put that. I should have put Jimmy in the list as well, too. But I could go on. We could do a whole show just on guitar players. Yes. I, there's so many guitar players. I pretty much love them all. Right. You know, they all have offered something. They all created um, a voice for us that, you know, you could tell right away who it was. And I, I do think there's more great guitar to come. And I, I we go back to this Greta Van Fleet, you know, like, you know, people really chew them a new one because it's like Led Zeppelin. But you know what? Well, we could use another Led Zeppelin again. There's no mm -hmm. reason why we can't. And but I, I I use that term loosely because they yeah they sound like Led Zeppelin, but they have their own unique voice. And what that's going to do is it's going to teach some of these other kids in the garage that you know we don't have to be like this over here. We can just make our natural. You know we can plug into a you know an old Plexi Marshall or an orange amplifier and something like a hollow body or whatever the case may be, and um, sound like ourselves without having to go out and here again like we said at the earlier part of the hour we have to sound like this because it's popular. No, now we can just do what we want to do and we need to, more bands to take a chance of that, not to please us, please themselves, which will probably end up pleasing us. I actually met, that's where I met Paul Gilbert. He showed up for, um, at the Montreal drum festival they have every year. Okay. And he was playing in a Led Zeppelin tribute with uh, Jason Bonham. Oh, that would be so awesome. And he came up with the wig, the page wig with the, with the, the captain's hat on and stuff like yeah. that. And they had this world famous, uh, uh, Robert Plant impersonator, and I forget who was playing bass at the time, but yeah, it was just incredible. Like that'd be so awesome to see for sure. And there's nothing like a Bonham drum, whether it's from from uh, John himself or Jason. That that bass drum, very true. Oh, it's just oh, there's nothing like it. And I was going to mention the other one you were talking about. Have you met? You've met Satriani, right? No, I have not met Joe Satriani. That's that's person. Um, I, I was supposed to have him on the show, and very last minute tour stuff come up, and he got bumped. Oh. Uh, never met him i'd love to meet him he's he's on my list of guitar players um that i i want to meet one day so him and only... I, him and i met in an elevator at the nam show at a hotel oh that's very the cool. Marriott. That's... well it wasn't a very it was good because we did vox and he was working on the new line of pedals that were coming at the time yep, <laughs> and i was i behaved myself that now it was all good but then the reps and i the last night you know we were having a couple of drinks and all that stuff I walk into the elevator and who's what do I see with that little fishing cap? Because as you know, almost all guitarists are like five six. It's like a, no. people think they're ten feet tall, but really Nam is a like a midget festival for the most part, you know. And and I'm standing, I'm looking over and I'm like, oh no, not tonight, <laughs> you know. So I went over and I said, well, I said I got to say something. I said, uh, Mr. Santriani, it's nice to meet you. And I put up my hand. I didn't trip, but you know that little bit of a clunk. 
Yeah, yeah. And he shook my hand very gracefully. He said, nice, nice. How are you? Nice to meet you. I said, oh, Mr. Mitchell. And he goes, you were saying don't do something stupid in your head, weren't you? And I said, yeah, kind of. <laughs> and I said, why did I say it loud? He goes, no, no. I goes, I could tell that you paused for a minute when you are coming over. He goes, it's all good. And, oh, well, Homer Simpson. You know yeah, <laughs> exactly. But he was as nice as could be, like the most friendly person in the world. I, I picture him that way. I really do. Like, I don't picture Joe as this guy. Like, you know, I, I follow him very closely on social media, and I just – he's a very giving guy, mm -hmm. you know, I think he'd be that way in real life too. And and I have a friend that's a, a mutual friend of his and I hear the stories of him, whatever. He just seems like a kind of guy that gives everything he can, yeah. you know, doing a lot now with these clinics, you know, of, of course he's getting paid to do them, but he's, he's just brought, um, Steve, I actually brought him on, on a clinic. Joe just did the G4 experience, whatever. Right. Um, but Steve, Vai is doing a new clinic and brought Joe on this one. And so that's going to be awesome. That like the be Academy or whatever. Fantastic. Academy. Oh my God. What a treat to watch. Yeah. And you, you're there as a, um, it's like a, basically you pay and you're there for, you know, a weekend or whatever it may be. I don't know the full details, but you're there being taught by Steve and Joe and everything like that. And you're one of them. You're not just sure there, you are a paycheck, you know, or they're a paycheck, whatever you want to say, but they're getting paid, but it's an experience that, you know, they will treat you like just another colleague in the industry and uh, you'll learn a lot from it. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. What an experience. And that's one thing I want to ask you is what's your, would you say your top three experiences meeting like, or like, you know, a, like whether just a quick meet or interviewing, who was your top three that you would put in that list? That um, I've interviewed? Yeah. Interviewed or met. Like it doesn't okay. necessarily have to be interviewed. Okay. Well, I haven't interviewed Eddie Van Halen yet, but I have met him, um, met him a few times and, um, that was awesome. The experience was awesome. And most people would think, you know, when you're meeting your, your idol for the very first time that you're going to be, you know, all, you know, tongue tied and that kind of stuff. I was actually more nervous talking to Alex than I was talking to Eddie. Alex is this like very intellectual. You wouldn't think of Alex as this intellectual guy, just this guy, you know, that beat the drums and, you know, the part of your back in the day, but he's very intellectual and very intimidating. Mm -hmm. Big tall too. Um, so I haven't interviewed Eddie, but people that I've interviewed, um, that were really impactful emotion, uh, emotional moment. And one of those ones, okay, is this actually really happening? So we mentioned Jason Becker. That was a moment where, you know, multiple times throughout the evening, I had to really curb the, the fanboy. you mm -hmm. know, I can put on a, good, a poker face. I can really fake it. You right. know, that I'm not jonesing out here that, okay, I'm talking to Jason Becker. Mm -hmm. So Jason Becker was up there. Um, the Paul Gilbert one that we did recently. And, and what's fun about that one is. We, we shared some outtakes on the thing because Paul, you know, we're having some fun. We're doing a test call long before the show. And Paul is um, drawing in this chalkboard that's behind them. And he's drawing some Marshall amplifiers. And this is where it got really fun. So he's drawing these things, whatever. And he's starting to play, whatever, and noodling, whatever. And he goes, how's that sound, whatever. And I said, oh, uh, turn up your mids. He goes, uh, he goes, what? I said, turn up your mids on the chalkboard. And he actually literally turns around and he goes to turn up the mids. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, and he goes, oh, uh -huh. you know, and, and everyone caught it that I got him, I caught him off guard. It was just a, a, such a fun moment. Um, you know, it's Steve Stevens been on the show a few times. I, I've always had fun with him. I, every guest really brings something, you know, really, really different. But there's been some people that aren't necessarily in the limelight when like the gold records on the wall and the platinum records. I've had some friends come on the show too that, you know, you think, you think that, okay, how, how are you going to come in after a Steve Stevens and be, you know, like, wow. And, and some just friends that I've had on the show, it's like, you learn such cool things about life. Sometimes we don't even talk about music. Mm -hmm. and, and then we're like, what a conversation. Oh, Gary Hoey. Gary Hoey is a great example. Um, I'm not sure if you know Gary Hoey, but he is absolutely phenomenal. Um, do you, have you heard the name? I'm trying to think now. You may, you may not because up in, up in Montreal and further North in Canada, he is bigger in the States. And um, the reason how I discovered him being on the Windsor Detroit border, um, you know, WRIF 101.1 FM in Detroit uh, oh. really helped him launch him uh, for the mainstream. Right. You know, he's from Boston, whatever. Um, but when I discovered Gary Hoey, um, number one, he's one of, he's an incredible player. Um, and on top of that, um, he's, he's family, you know, like you just, you just hang out with and, and talk about everything but music mm. and you know what i mean it's just sometimes you, it's the topic at hand is the the topic that you least talk about and that's the thing too with van halen people sometimes people think that um when i bring these guests on the evh show it, it could be sometimes zero van halen content yeah i always judge how much van halen content depending on my guest and really what the show is based around is um 
you know, um, what do you think Eddie's done in, in, for the in, in inspiration on guitarists, manufacturers, that kind of stuff? And then depending on how they feel about, you know, their knowledge of Van Halen, then we just go off into their world and focus on what's important in that guest world. So, but yeah, those, those are probably some of the guitar players. And I really, I really can't say um, there's ever been a bad, a bad guest. It's I've learned something from every single guest and I try to find a takeaway from every single guest, whether it be like, um, you know, uh, uh, Paul Gilbert said, you know, if, if your goal in life, one of the goals in life, you should be able to hum um, like a kazoo, you know, you can play a kazoo and, yeah. and you know, that kind of thing. You should be able to do that with leads and melodies on the guitar. It'll do that and just hum it like a kazoo. And uh, if you can do that, then you've got some chops. Oh, I love that. That's what I was, and that was so cool. I was because I was curious on your view. I think ever uh, one. Uh, do you remember the band Overkill? Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, the singer, uh, he was at Montreal Metal Fest, and we were hosting a big thing there. We helped them their first years, and uh, he came over. and And I mean, I've met some pretty big names, Slash, and all these things. Mm-hmm. But "Hello from the Gutter" is the very first song that I ever taught myself on guitar. That I taught myself from A to Z. And all those years later, I had my 10-year-old son with me. Bobby's there, and he comes and sits in this booth we got. And then they sit down, and I grab a guitar, which I usually I'm like you. I'm, I don't want to play in front of people. You know, I'm very guarded. Yep. But I sat there and remembered a good half of it. And he sang while I played, and I thought, I'm on heaven and earth right now. I have my 10-year-old son sitting here. I'm playing the song that means more to me that I literally, my fingers bled trying to learn how to play. Yeah, that experience. Yeah, and you'll remember that for the rest of your life for that sole reason. Yeah, exactly. I know you can't see. I just brought up the picture of him there, and that. And he was so cool about it. You know, he was, because so, he's not the like I say. He's, and you know, when you're there at those things where there's a bunch of bands, some get a lot more exposure than others. Mm-hmm. And you get somebody like that's actually kind of modest and almost like why me, you know? And then I told him, and I said, this is like the honor of a century, you know, for me. Yeah. Because I grew I, up, once again, rural Quebec, you have no bands, nobody to watch. Everything is like TV and the tab magazines, you know? <laughs> I had I had one of those moments um, just the other night, and it was one of the ones where, fortunately, all the ducks uh, were in, in a row somewhat. Um, so a lot, there's some people that watch my show that don't even know I play guitar because I do more talking than I do guitar playing, and that's cool. Right. As long as they enjoy the channel, I don't care if they're watching me play guitar or they're watching an interview. As long as they're watching, I'm very happy, happy and grateful. But a lot of times I will do live jams. And the other night, I think it was, I've done two videos that were kind of NAM previews, the one that you guys saw last night. And then I did one a couple nights back, I forget when it was, but a NAM preview as well too. And I wasn't planning on playing. I wasn't plugged in with my guitar like I am today. I was plugged in, but running through my speakers as opposed to running through the mixer. And lo and behold, you know, talking about Gary Kramer's place and Gary Holtz there at Gary Kramer's house. And Gary Kramer, he says, just letting you know, no pressure whatever, but Gary Kramer's watching. And uh, instantly, my mojo that I thought I had working it instantly hit a, a roadblock. But you can either you can either when that train comes off the caboose off the tracks a little bit, you can you can let that whole train go off and there's no survivors, right. or you regroup. And I was able to regroup enough that I got the uh, the nod from Gary Kramer saying um, uh, approval or whatever. So oh uh, that, wow, that was a cool moment. Even, and Gary doesn't play. Um, that's what he's like. Leo Fender doesn't play guitar. But you don't have to necessarily play guitar to make some of the world's best guitars. So that was that was a real moment that I will treasure for for probably the rest of my life. Well, the uh, Gary Holt was saying that uh, Gary Kramer was watching the stream uh, for a while too today. Oh, that's fantastic! That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. He's he's a, he, I, just from what I know about Gary so far. He's a young kid at heart. Like I, I, we're probably going to get into trouble. I think we're going to seriously get into trouble in, in California in a, in a good way. You know? it, it is. Well, that's where memories are made. <laughs> okay, you kids, it's bedtime. Let's go. It's <laughs> that happened one time I was at uh, uh, Disneyland. Um, oh, my God. What's it called? House of Blues. Okay. And you get tickets for everything. And I went to see a band that was up and coming. I didn't know much about them called Disturbed. Hmm. Through uh, Digitech, well, they did Digitech and Washburn that we did. Yeah, Dan Donegan, uh, I think that was his name. He's yeah, uh, <laughs> he was endorsing everything that we did pretty yeah. much, and it was all right, but it wasn't quite my thing. And I go upstairs. Long story short, I sit at the bar for two hours. It's kind of a pudgy guy with long hair. We talk about mowing the lawn, everything and anything but music. And I realized after who I'd been talking to was Eric uh, Peterson of Testament, and they were my oh. gods. Yep. Growing up, my gods, but I haven't followed them in years. I, you know, I'm kind of got away from everything. And we had the best conversation of our life, and it was so nice not knowing who he was to just talk. 
That's right, because and they'll remember that too because they get asked all the time, "What string gauge do you use?" Yes, you know, like so when they can just be under the radar, not drawing any attention to themselves, they're going to remember that's a guy I met at such and such a convention, whatever, and he didn't ask me about music. Yes, exactly. Well, he was happy after too. I got I had two stage uh, uh, two tickets for Santana that night through Sabian, so. Oh, right on. He was my second, so he was. <laughs> we got to hang out in that. And then Testament was my band, like more than Metallica or anything. That was the band, like you know, and so that was cool. And the last one you were mentioning about about musicians, uh, builders that don't even play, well, of course, was Jim Marshall, mm-hmm. who of course was a drummer, not even a guitar player. Look what he's done. Oh, and I hung out with him so much because where we worked, he'd come in for a, a week each year. Mm-hmm. And everybody hated cigar smoke. I don't yeah. have a problem with smoke. <laughs> so I got to be his chaperone all the time. That's right, because here in Canada, Korg carries uh, carries Marshall products. That's right. So you were the distributor. So, yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, even back then it was under Ericsson, and then they shifted it over later on to Korg. So they've had them for a long time and a good – and they're actually Jam Industries now, I heard, is doing it stateside as well. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 a good company. Like I, I, they were our distributors at the music store where I worked, and um, over the years, past couple of years, I've started working closely with Personas as well too. And mm. and Erickson and Jam uh, are the uh, the the people here that have facilitated some of the Personas gear too. So that was really cool. I, yeah. I, 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 you're like the second or third person, like Sunny and that. You know, I'm starting to feel like it's like well, this is your life, Andrew. Coming <laughs> back sometimes. I know you can't see it at home. I want to just share. This is a picture of my son with Jim Marshall. Uh, he signed a Marshall mini stack for him. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I love those little things. Yeah, the little the little twelve inch. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll watch the video back and I'll see that later on. That, okay, that, yeah, he was really cool. And he was so, we had a little inside joke sometimes. He used to say that it was more, uh, an amp by Marshall was worth more if Jim Marshall didn't sign it because that man oh. was a machine. Yeah, and same thing to uh, Stan Lee in the comics. Yes, you know, the, exactly, uh, exactly. Sometimes just about everything, you know, at certain times in his life, you know, he was down on his luck financially a little bit. Yep. You know, and, you know, the, the he watched these shows like the Pawn Stars and stuff like that. Oh, this is worth you know five thousand dollars, but it's signed by Stan Lee, so it's now it's worth two thousand. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's supply and demand, right? <laughs> That's right. It's a harder yeah. one to come by. Mm-hmm. It is true though. He he uh, he was eighty two at the time, and he signed two hundred and eighty signatures in like an hour. Like the man was, and right on his way to the airport, he insisted as long as somebody was there, he was signing it. That's right. You go back to the days, you know, when our parents would watch all the black and white movies, like you know your James Deans and things like that, where they didn't sign too much, yeah, or even further back you know some of these you know women celebrities that would do like the usos and the military things you know um you know they would only sign a couple of things here and there whatever and uh that's why they're worth so much money because there just aren't signatures out there well that exactly and i mean for him like i mean you're probably aware of his story like you know he was in the hospital for almost five years he had chalked uh chalk it's a slang but the chalk bone disease where your bones are like chalk Oh, I, I did not know that no yeah he was from five to eleven i think it was and then they put him he got out and then basically he was just thrown into his peer's classroom and he didn't know any of it because he was uh, that far behind everybody. Mm-hmm. So he started a milk run and with the milk run he was delivering every day. He hadn't saved up enough money to buy a swing star drum set and he started playing them with big bands and used that then to open his music store uh, with that money. And then he was drumming and then he got uh, by Pete Townsend and, and Hendrix, of course, were the first ones to go after these towering amps and he told them yeah. your roadies will never carry them and they said there are roadies will they'll do as we say and three months later they're back they said every roadie's gonna quit if we don't do something so that's when they got cut in half and that's right they were yeah they're eight they were eight yeah miles. oh my god what beast to carry especially back then <laughs> like, yeah. God. yeah insane i insane. don't blame a roadie for quitting <laughs> i would I know. just say because <laughs> a lot of time back then the pay was not very good it's just no. they got jewels of what the band would get you know back and then it'd be like the sex drugs and rock and roll yeah you were a hang around basically like in a motorcycle group except on stage that's right and you know they're 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 probably the biggest claim to fame they'd ever get in their lives so yep that's right well they weren't a lot of ambitious guy but they still like when that much weed and everything going around carrying those kind of amps for long periods would not be a big seller so yeah i know it's like you know what i value my back and i value my life <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so ex- I'm enjoying this conversation so much with you. I truly am. Oh, it as well. It's been a real pleasure. It's nice because you know it's it's as we say. You know, you guys are used to being on the mic all the time. I'm used to being on the mic all the time. And when you're on the other side of it, you know, it's I know I'm still on this side of the microphone, but you know, it's it's a it's a blessing because I don't have to push all these buttons. And at the same time, 
I, I want to push all the buttons. Yes. Like, <laughs> my security blanket, right? You know, so. You're no, doing I, better I, than us, actually. I have to apologize sometimes to people. I catch myself when I'm being interviewed. So. Yeah, I usually, because I usually am mostly on the chat. I can't keep my hands off if we are guests on some arms. <laughs> like, oh, I can't. I got to get in the chat. It's so hard. No, you're good. You guys run a really good show and that's the thing too i i don't get a chance to look at the chat and i always apologize to people i i miss a million names but that's why i would knock a butterfly here i mean she yeah. like i she like she has the keys to the place she just you know runs everything as smooth as smooth can be and uh it takes a huge pressure off of me so i know each of you have your talents that help really overall impact the dynamic of the show and it's you can't do it on your own and really i mean there's a, there's people out there that do it on their own um and they may look like they're alone doing it and some of them are, but when you have the team dynamic, whether you're on camera like you guys are, or you've got someone else off camera, um, teamwork makes a successful show. Oh, definitely. Without her, I've done some of my own, you know, the odd one here and there. Yeah. I feel so lost without her. And the chat definitely feels lost without her because I forget yeah. half the time. I'm well, appalling. Just, just last night when you guys popped in, uh, she wasn't in about the first half hour. She had another commitment for a little bit and she told me she might not be in. And um, I was like, I actually felt her presence not there. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, she's there all the time. I wasn't getting text messages from her. So you actually feel that void. Yes. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. I was a little like, okay, um, what if there's a train wreck here? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do rely on each other. That's for sure. And I don't know. Sometimes I do I do admire people who do everything on their own. Yeah, uh, big time. Because it's, it must be so hard uh, to do it up to par and, and do everything, everything uh, alone. There's just so much things to do and can be done. You know, it's, it's hard to be alone in that. Like I always right. tell people, you know, when you watch a TV show at the end, they show two minutes of credits as soon as you go on youtube you're all those two minutes of credits into one mm -hmm. it's a lot of hats to wear whether you're doing video or live stream it, it's a if you want to go anywhere with it and it doesn't mean you want to be famous but just to make quality internet, it's a lot of work tags editing design uh, uh marketing uh promotion networking uh, all those things as you know uh, firsthand this is a, this is a job i would love to to farm out to somebody but, you know, you uh, uh, like all jobs, you want to keep it close, keep it with family because, you know, you, you're it's a trusting thing. But I would love to have a talent agent just book the guests for me because I can spend now doing it with four shows. Um, it was bad enough with one. You know, it, that's a whole job, a whole week's job doing that with one show. And, you know, you're staying on top because 90 percent of the time I'm dealing with, you know, either agents, publicists or manager management. And, you know, they're going to look at they're going to look at me and then they're going to look at Howard Stern. OK, who am I going to give? Howard Stern ace freely, or am I going to give Eric ace freely? Okay, Howard Stern, here you go. Mm -hmm. You know, and so if you don't stay on top of these publicists, um, fortunately, recently I've come across a couple um, smaller public relations firms, but they're hungry, which is great. When uh, when I say they're hungry, you know, they want to work. They they know how we're working hard to get these guests because they've been on the other receiving end of it. And um, I just I praised this public relations firm, um, Status PR. I, I think they're out of Los Angeles. And, you know, they, they brought me uh, James Chen from The Walking Dead. And I said, you know, before we go any further, I just want to hats off and acknowledge this because things like that don't happen without someone on the receiving end, you know, getting it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and I think these podcasts are mine, yours, all these other millions that are out there on YouTube and these shows, whether it's a podcast or a talk show, whatever you want to call it, you know, I think there are there is some valuable entertainment to people. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all looking for something to watch. Yep. and teach. TV really stinks. It really does. Uh, <laughs> there's a few blockbuster shows and, and really a small handful, but there's so much in a diverse field on YouTube, you know, whether it's like, okay, we're going to talk about fixing plumbing every Tuesday. And you know what? I can't afford to pay a plumber. So I'm going to learn how to do this myself. You know, YouTube is certainly, I really hope it's here for, for many years to come because it's a lot of enjoyment for us. Oh, definitely. I also want to acknowledge somebody who just came in, Juliet Miranda. I hope you guys will get to know each other. Juliet does a podcast one of the top 200 on iTunes. She blushes, I found out through her husband when I say this. <laughs> so I'm going to lay it on that sort of thing. We love Juliet Miranda. Yeah, the podcast yeah. is called Unrideable Rand. Yep, uh, you know the show Almost, the movie Almost Famous? Yes. Well, that's her life. She took off and ran with all the bands in the 80s, writing about them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and Did the whole, she just had K.K. Downing on uh, not too long ago. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so you guys would be uh, good people to meet. So yeah. I'll definitely yeah. put you in touch with each other. Yeah. 
she does she done a lot of music she also had like mike Rowe on and stuff like that and so yeah oh yeah they're amazing they're a couple yeah. too working uh, together on the same project mm-hmm. uh, her guy david the producer <laughs> yeah he <laughs> helped us this, he helped us get a couple we actually had two emmy award-winning guests thanks to her this fall so yeah. it's nice it really is and and it, it helps so much because you know like it, you know we we all are we start out small very very small and you know, it's hard to get our voices heard to even be, okay, are we credible? What does this guest want to come on? And, you know, I've run into the obstacle a few times where like, you know, I'll talk to a guest and I'll say, if, if I physically get to talk to the guest, I'll say, okay, what's well, going to be a 90 minute format. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, you know, I, I only do five minutes on the radio. <laughs> and then just, trust me, here's a link at the last couple of shows. I'll send them a, you know, random ones, whatever. And then I've had guests and I always, I try, I try religiously to keep my, the EVH show uh, 90 minutes. Yeah. And I don't care how good the guest is. There are exceptions, you know, I'd never want to cut a guest off in the middle of a sentence, but I like to keep it bam 90 minutes because I always want people wanting more, you know, but then the guests will say, oh, I can stay for two more hours. And you know, you're not, you're not being rude to the guests. It's like, you know what, trust me, I'm glad you like it. Cause now I'm going to have you back four months from now. And we're going to, we're going to continue to what we had for those two hours reserved. Right. And uh, it's great. They, they love it. I've not had a get, guest yet say, you know, who, man, thank God that's done. Yep. You know, it's, and then we'll talk when we go off the air, I always say good night, everybody. And I'll talk to the guests after the air. And we talk, they, we, some of them will teach Junior how to play bass. Mm. Or like Rudy Sarzo told, t- t- gave Eric some tips after the show. That is so cool. There's mm. some, uh, there's some really, like, you know, you lose the people factor and them. So many are people into it. And that, that's probably like the same for us and probably Juliet and all these people. When you meet a decent amount of celebrities, it's amazing the personal size that you get out of them that you just, reinstates your faith in humanity if that sounds not too corny no it's nice because you know and for the most part actually for all the all all guests i've interviewed to this to this day you know you expect these rock stars to carry that rock star persona over here yep. and some people might actually be disappointed in the chat watching because they're like they're waiting for the rock star moments but they're just human beings yep. you know at the end of the day they put the pants on the same way do or their 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 whatever their, <laughs> their garb is that they wear they do it just like we do they yep. you know they live the way we do. They breathe the same air. We just have to kind of take that pedestal and bring it down. And after after a few shows, you know, it, it's second nature. But just like when I would perform in the band days, I always like to pretend I had cement overshoes or uh, cement shoes, meaning that, you know, I don't want to be drowning in the ocean like, uh, you know, like, a, a, like a, a mob death or something. But I mean grounded where you don't want to be egoed out and inflated ego stuff. I like to be grounded. And I find that way with um, music and I find that way with all the guests too. You know, you're there to do a job and you can't be fanboying out. You can have some moments, yep. but you got to respect the guest time. You got to come up with some good questions and you need to just be natural as opposed to like, I used to always like to make the joke, you know, like Saturday Night Live skit where uh, Chris Farley's interviewing uh, Paul McCartney. And yep. I, I always relate to that. I said, this is what I don't want to ever be. Yes. Is, remember when you're in the, like, if I had Gene Simmons, remember when you're in Kiss? That was cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I don't do that. Don't do that. You know, and maybe do it for fun on purpose, yeah. but don't do that as your stick because uh, you're going to be, you're going to hear the crickets chirping pretty quick and it's going to be a short run show for you. We had Paul Stanley for watch for one time. We had to delay. He was going to do a signing. We had to hold him for two hours. We, he had a kidnapping attempt called on his, on him. Wow. We had to have two wow. L- undercover LAPDs come in with nine millimeter Berettas and then get the walkthrough, you know, the perimeter talk and everything else and all yeah. that. That's scary. Yeah, he was. He was actually nice. I I, hate, I don't want to talk ill of him, but I did have to get two pictures: one with me with them, and one of him doing something because it kind of looked a bit like a wax museum figure. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, so I got to get him an actual movement, you know? So be, it was real. yeah, I, he's he's a big Kiss fan. Big Kiss fan. They've earned it. I mean, they've earned it. I, I met Gene Simmons, but he was taping that show at the time. We didn't know what it was called, but it ended up being uh, the one he did on A and E about the fam- oh. Family Jewels. Jules, yeah, and we didn't know at the time what he was doing. That was all under wraps, so he was with cameras and that. So it was very cordial and very quick, you know. That's one band, and I, I haven't met any of the artists from that band. You know, like I'm, I'm the original Kiss lineup. I love Ace Frehley. I love the original lineup. Um, never met any of them, and I would really like to one one day. That'd be very cool. I'm sure I'm uh, options are there as long as they're alive and I'm alive. It's there's it's a possibility, right? I'm sure there are, I'm, and I mean, I'm, I'm sure they'd be great. Gene Simmons would be hard, I think, to interview. I think yeah, he, I think he'd interview us. He would. He yeah, would. and I like I like Kiss, and I hate to say it, and God strike me down for saying this. I don't know how I would feel about the interview with Gene Simmons. I, mean, I don't know if it would go where I would want it to go. Would be my biggest concern. And there's not many, but we were talking about that rock star factor. 
Yeah. I think he would fall into that very small minority that I would actually be very not weary. I wouldn't want to do it, but I, I, I would have doubts of it ever turning out the way I would want it to or. You never know. Yeah, he might the, surprise you. Yeah, he might. <laughs> <laughs> comfort zone that you normally would have the, i think the the thing that you are like both you guys and myself would have in common if we either had the opportunity to interview gene simmons the thing that we'd have in common is we like gene simmons and gene simmons likes gene simmons <laughs> yeah. that is such a good answer oh i love that yeah. <laughs> and on the other side of the forum was i was just going to say a while ago when you're talking about like you know with like the, the most of them don't have that side was uh, dave mustaine from megadeth and I, okay. I, he was a great guy. I'd only met him once or twice before quickly, but he played, he had did the Gigantor in Montreal. Nice. My cousin had just come to college. He was from a small rural area. I know what it's like when you never get to see a band. So his very first concert ever was backstage at Gigantor with Megadeth. And I'm like, yours is a little bit better than my Lee Aaron one with yeah. like, you know, 150 people. Yeah. So, but uh, after it was all done, everybody rushed him when he was back. And he, my cousin went to go, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, stay back. He hates that. He despises oh, when they do that. They rush up, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and five minutes later, of course, he was sick of them trying to get out, and he pointed over and said, who's the you know, the guy? And she's all from Marshall. And come over, he goes, oh, I remember you from Nam." And uh, he said, this is my cousin, and it's his first concert. And I think my cousin was expecting a bit of the bleh, you know, kind of. <laughs> but Dave, of course, born again, you know, and uh, recovering alcoholic, all these things. And he's, he was really touched, and he put his hand on his shoulder, and he goes, you picked me for your first concert? You know, he was really, like, kind of taken back. He That's spent cool. 40 minutes with my cousin. He took him all through backstage as they were tearing it down, took him into the back part. Would you like some tea or coffee? Would you like a soft drink? And I think my cousin was so excited. At the same time, a little, like I say, thrown back. He thought it was going to be the craziest mental experience. Yep. But after the next day, when it kind of settled in, he was like, that was so amazing that he took all that time to see me. And I said, exactly, because you treated him like a human being. That's right, and that's a memory that'll last for both both parties. Dave will remember that for quite some years. Yeah. You know, other than the person running up, can I get an autograph and I get it on eBay real quick? Yes. You know, that, you know that's very very cool. And that's yeah. the thing is to treat them like human beings. You'll get a lot more out of them sometimes. You mm -hmm. know, it, nothing's guaranteed in life, but nine chances out of ten, they've had a bad day. They've had a good day. They just want to be people like anybody else. That's right. Let's decompress a little bit. Not talk about my my day job. You yes, know? exactly. Let's talk about um. You know, let's let's talk about uh, a sports team or whatever. You know, whatever. They do have other interests. You know, they're not a one trick pony. You know. Yep. Look at Alice Cooper with the golfing and everything else. I mean, people were shocked when they found that out. But they do have real look. Iron Maiden uh, with wasted years videos showed off all their interests that those guys had. Yeah, they people just stereotype this that you're out there, you know, rock, 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 get in the bus, rock again. Like there's the, these musicians when they do these massive tours, the first thing they want to do is see something, some sign of life. You know, that's why they're like, "Hello, Cleveland." No, we're in Boston. Like you just don't know anymore. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go see some of the Boston uh, landmarks. Let's go see some of their cuisine. Or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. Which they, they don't, don't even get a chance to sometimes. They would love to get out more. You know, they're kind of caged in sometimes with their schedules and everything. They are, yeah. And the more successful the band, you know, the 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 labels, especially back in the day, were so cutthroat that they really could care less about you. They didn't oh. even care if you're alive. They would keep you coked up and everything else just so you could do your job. Definitely. You know, you know like basically... Like, uh, like keeping on life support almost to go do your job, get it done. They didn't care what was happening, your family life, whatever, yep. you know, and we don't care if you get to see the Grand Canyon, just get to that gig and play it and sell some t-shirts, repeat next day. Yep. Well, I mean, how many bands were medicated enough? You know, Pink Floyd said it best. They showed it, you know, through yep. their videos, but it was based on real life experiences. The show yeah. must go on, you know? I mean, no wonder the music is so good there. You know, they're in another dimension, you know, for <laughs> <laughs> so detached from reality they didn't even know if they were coming or going i mean roger waters turned into a vegetable for some time over it yeah yeah it's a thing like how, how did they write so good you, you just don't want to know you don't, don't <laughs> yeah, exactly that's the part they show you it's like the wizard of oz that's behind the curtain you know right. we don't need to open that that curtain at all it's just it's good music i know Xenia wants to break in and i, and I seen gary had mentioned it and a lot of people are saying it's time to uh they like to, if you're up to it, they'd like to hear a well, little bit. Well, I just bit. wanted to mention that Gary Holt said that you are going to play a real Eddie Van Halen uh, Frankenstein at Gary Kramer's Guitar Museum. Yeah. Oh. I, yeah, there's a 5150, um, one of the Kramer 5150s that you would, yeah, if, you, if you notice, uh, um, I, well, Eddie played the 5150 Kramer for the longest time before he went over to um, Ernie Ball. And uh, Kramer was the big thing for Eddie. It was going to be like, a, and Eddie really made Kramer a, a big brand for sure. Not not just Eddie, but he had a lot to do with it. Um 
and the 5150 guitar that you'd see him playing just about everything that live without net video you know uh you know 1984 j jump all you know while he played the frankie as well too um but what i'm referring to is the typical red white and black stripe with the one pickup deal not the uh the uh the other the big frankie and uh, so it's there it's one at one of his and so playing oh. that is going to be wow. i'm going to be i'm going to be nervous playing it but oh, yeah. you know, at the same time you know i'm just i'm just a dude you know if i fail miserably i'm going to have fun and fail miserably <laughs> <laughs> that's a good attitude i love it yeah. oh yeah. my god wow wow what a, what an honor though uh, I, I i'm in i'm still in awe <laughs> sorry i think that's absolutely so I, I am too and i don't want to think about it too much because if i start thinking about it then it's it's a different game altogether so yes. we're gonna go to nam we're gonna get our job done at nam we're gonna have some fun and then we're gonna go to gary's and i'm going to, I, I anticipate going to gary's and i'm going to see a really cool dude um forget about what he's done with his legacy that will we'll get into when the cameras start rolling i i want to just be with gary and you know just dudes a couple a couple dudes just talking about you know life and then perhaps wow. you know one of the owners of one of the world's most successful guitar companies ever that comes secondary well, that is going to be so cool mm. oh my god what an honor yes yeah wow uh, what an experience uh, i i'm yeah. so uh i'm so excited for the series now that are going to come on your channel yes and i just want to see every bit of it now <laughs> it, it's going to be phenomenal yes. i have no doubts about that i'm so excited for it uh there's not many of those guys left you know we were just talking about that the other day you know leo fender all those guys are pretty much gone now i know i know and you know we almost lost completely the factory of uh wayne charvel yep uh, Know, and you know fortunately he's still around you know like a lot of the pioneers um you know we still got our grover jacksons you know we got the people like that and there's new you know up and comers uh that are we're going to see a lot at nam that are like really carrying the torch yep um i do find and this is going to be a conversation i'm going to have with gary for sure i know i want to bring this up is like you know um what what's the next innovation you know gary's brought some really cool innovation in guitar um we've seen everything from you know um you know kramer having like the, the floyd rose before anybody else uh, where Floyd Rose is a locking tremolo system where, you know, it can pretty much throw it off of an airplane and the guitar rustles. <laughs> um, there's been, you know, better woods, better materials, uh, blah, blah, blah. But what is the next thing in innovation in guitar? There's auto-tuning guitars, there's robotic guitars, but I'm really looking forward to that small part of a very big conversation is what does he think is coming for innovation? Has, has the wheel been done to death when it comes to guitar? That's going to be a great conversation, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, definitely. But, most definitely. Um I, I don't know. I just think it's so cool. I'm sorry. I'm so excited you're going to play it. I'm yeah. so excited you're going to play that guitar there. Like, I just can't wait to see it. I, I'm going to be living so vicariously through you at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> What's even cooler, and this this will show you how much that I'm keeping myself in perspective and grounded, as much as that would be the coolest opportunity in the world, um, I'm also told that Junior is going to, well, Junior will be playing it. There's no way Dad's going to play it without him playing it, but he's going to get to play one of the very first Travis Bean uh, Travis Bean and Gary Kramer formed a, a partnership together, and I, I believe one of the very first bases, like serial number 001, you know, so Junior's going to get to play a, a piece of iconic history as well, too. Um, oh. So I'm going to be prouder. Of, honestly, it's, it's cool to play that guitar. It's going to be cool to watch Junior play it and play one of these prototype bases, plus anything else that we want to play. I'm going to be living through Junior, trust me. Wow. What, what an experience to share with him. Wow. What an experience to share. So that's the coolest part of it all. That is, that I can't wait to see it. We're going to be glued to it. So you're going to have to keep us up to date on what's going on with it as well. well one week from tonight at this time. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, no, I shouldn't say this time. because It's uh, nine o'clock. We're at nine o'clock Eastern right now, but nine o'clock Pacific this time next Wednesday, we'll be doing our first live show from our hotel. Um, and we've got some surprise guests coming to the hotel to be on as well too. So I'm looking forward to that one week from tonight. We'll be live in Anaheim. So that's going to be fun. That wow! So awesome. Definitely, I'll definitely make sure I'm gonna be checking that out. That's for sure. Are you by any chance going to the Seymour Duncan booth? For sure, I am. Yes, going there for the sole fact that number one, uh, getting to meet Seymour Duncan would be um, be phenomenal. Never met him. And number two, I believe I was the first uh, media outlet to cover the new Seymour Duncan uh, Eddie Van Halen Frankenstein pickup. There's a custom shop pickup that um, he's done with Eddie, and he's, they've worked with Eddie before. Of course, almost had some pickups. You know, the Eddie Van Halen signature pickup. Just you know, all the you know ink on the on the contracts didn't dry or didn't get dotted, whatever. So that never really necessarily happened. But um, I covered the story on that one, and I want to you know talk to Seymour personally about that. Um, I don't have a schedule booked with him yet. I'm booked with everybody that I need to be uh, booked with. So I have talked to the team at Seymour to see if I can schedule um, you know 15, 20 minutes with Seymour himself. He there's several days where he's doing hand winding himself, showing the uh, people how to do that. But I don't want to just budge in and say, hey, when you're done, can I, I want to do it the proper way and book a time with them. 
I've been up to his uh, in Santa Barbara because, and he is the most sweetest, kindest person. You'll and he'll remember you twenty years down the road if he sees you, and he'll be working the floor more than any other salesperson. Not pushing, Mm -hmm. he'll answer anything to anybody who comes up. You'll not if you don't didn't know who Seymour Duncan was, you just think he's another guy working the floor. Like he's such an amazing person. That's cool. Yeah, I really look forward to that. It'd be a really cool moment, and it's also kind of one of those things where there's certain people in life that. You know, it's like certain things in life, like events, like watching the man land on the moon, you know, if it did really happen, you know, but it supposedly it happened. Uh, but meeting the man who walked on the moon the very first time and, um, you know, uh, getting to see Jimi Hendrix, you know, at uh, Woodstock. Yes. Meeting Thor Duncan is one of those life moments that, you know, people might think, dude, he just makes pickups. No, he, he made sound, He's... you know, like guitar players made the sound, but he just, Seymour Duncan was kind of one of the voices yep. of some of the best music we've ever heard on record today. Yep, he's one of the he's the, the last really surviving member of the Fathers Allowed. I mean, Leo's gone, yeah. and uh, uh, Les Paul, uh, Marshall, Jim Marshall. It's only Seymour out of those four. Mm-hmm. Still, you know, we got, we got Demarzio out there still doing a great. Yeah, Demarzio thing. too. Yes, I should say. Sorry, yes. All, all the um, and you would have carried them through your distributors as well too back in the day. I think it was FK. I think maybe that carried them. Um, not positive on that, but. And then there's all the boutique manufacturers as well, too. Everyone's making a good pickup. There's probably nobody out there that's really yeah. making a bad pickup. But he's one of those guys where you need you need to book some time in your life to meet him and just shake his hand and even to say, you know what, thanks for the sound, man. Yeah, no, definitely. Most definitely. Oh, it's going to be cool. No, no, and and you'll, he's just going to be – I can just see him. I can, He's one of those people I can just picture him with the shirt he's going to be wearing, the type of shirt, and just the way yeah. he's moving, I can see him in front of me. Yeah, he'd just be like a regular dude, I'm sure. Well, big time. And very appreciative, very kind, and got a memory like a whip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm very jealous of him for that. What do you think, hon? Uh, I think so. I think it's time, yeah. Yeah, we're getting more and more people saying in the chat, if you're if you're still up to it. I've got a couple songs I've got queued up, and the reason um, why I queued these ones up, I wanted to play something uh, 99.9% of the time. I'm tuned down a half step in my music. Right. Van Halen thing. And it's I have a really good ear where I can tune a guitar by... Per, almost perfect pitch but perfect pitch for uh for a half step down right so really weird because i've just heard that tone my whole life so i'm tuned up with um, a line six variax guitar right now i think i've got some tone can you hear that perfect all right so i'm going to play a song it's a slow one first um, i should just get some tone here okay so i'm going to play a song it's called uh, pass you by Got, it's kind of a real nice rock ballad. It's one of my own songs. And I promise if I play anything tonight, I play something that's I own the copyright to. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, I do not want to have a nice show and then you guys get a <laughs> We do appreciate it. Yeah. You're too kind. No problem. So this one's called Pass You By. And and this is a good life lesson. Um, you know, the singer that wrote the lyrics for this, he, he kind of took it in a little slightly different direction than what I he wrote about his daughter, which was great. Oh. Uh, really really nice but my concept on the song and it still is to this day um is don't let your life pass you by and if you you know if you're 80 years old and you you're you know you're counting down your days maybe your health isn't the best look back at your life and and appreciate what you've got your, your grandkids your great grandkids um you know look at the thing look at the world you've traveled or if you're a young kid you're a teenager or whatever don't let your life pass you by if you got a, your mind set on something go after it and that's kind of what the song to me means. So nice. when you hear the lyrics and you hear the music, um, it'll kind of t- hopefully it'll take you on that path. So I'll try to cue it up, Love turn it. on my laptop, which is going to cue the uh, music. And I may or may not turn off my microphone. You might get a little bit of string clack, but it wouldn't shouldn't be too bad. So I'll leave it on. It's going to be just fine. All right, here we go. So uh, hopefully that. Okay, here it comes. <laughs> I'm 
too great vocals as well man it, it all... this uh the singer that we had at this time uh, we went through a bunch of singers we were, we were kind of like spinal tap we had instead of drummers well we do went through a lot of drummers too but this singer is the audition tape he sent us he sent us uh, i think it was like we all die young whatever from the movie rockstar right and uh it was as good if not better than the original vocal we we're like whoa you know like this guy and what you heard that that wasn't even his full range he, he, he could hit that in his sleep really? you know wasn't in the cards you know we, everyone has creative differences but um just the guy was uh could sing like a bird um we're gonna take the same same singer i'll play another rock one and i may even be able to give you one more because i'll really rock it up but this sure. one here is called loaded gun and um let me see if i can get a distorted tone here try to get that this one's a fun one okay let's put on some thick material okay so here we go this one's fun uh, and it's called Loaded Gun. Again, nice, nice vocal. Lots of rock. A little bit more guitar wanking on this one. I'm loving it. That's what they're waiting for. I can tell. I know the audience. I know what they're going for. I'll try to give you some. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, my God. Useless wanking. I loved it. You let her. Yeah. It's on his side. I'm <laughs> 
That's a fun one. Yes. I'll, I'll give you one last one. And this one I will, and I will shut off my microphone for this one. Cause what I'm going to do is with this computerized guitar I've got here, it's a line six Variax. I'm going to actually tune it down so I can actually literally do this. I could do it with my uh, helix down below here if I wanted to, or I can also do it with the, with the knob I have here. So right now I'm going to put it like on a Les Paul sound. Okay. Watch, I can actually tune my guitar down. What the? Tuning at one. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna go to drop D. Oh. Actually, I'm gonna go to drop so D. Cool. So uh, drop D, D flat. Okay, so there we go. So, and if I was to put my guitar up, you heard the natural things coming through. You're gonna hear kind of uh, real guitar, and you're gonna hear the down tune. It's gonna sound crazy. So I need to mute my microphone. So I'll play this one for you. This one's called Runaway, and this one's a real fast driving chug 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 uh kind of thing so watch this one here i can get to it it's a fun one Put singer all together but it'll give you a nice feel and i will turn my microphone off of this one so we'll let's we'll see what happens with this one yeah because your your uh hides are getting drunk <laughs> Sorry, what? I'll catch up with it. i can't stop it <laughs> It did actually stop. We'll try it again. So yeah, I know what you mean by the highs. Yeah. Try that again. I was a fault of mine. No problem. Okay, here we go. Oh, <laughs> 
That was, it was awesome. Your mic is low, losing up. Like your mic, of course, because the way it's set up, you're losing some of your tone in between it. But it was absolutely. So for everybody wanting to hear the true live sound, you got to go over yep. to Eric's channel and his Patreon page, where all the music is available. Most right, definitely. right. <laughs> and I'm gonna get your fingers are crazy fast. That is, ah, uh, wow. And wow. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna ask you because so without the music, because people can actually hear the rest, last part of it. You got to just give us a little bit of noodling on some. Uh, Wherever you feel like doing it, maybe a half step down or uh, standard. I'll, I'll go to normal standard, and that way I'm using the um, the magnetic pickups of the guitar as opposed to computerized. So let's go back here a second, and let's try. Uh, I'll try something that I'll do some Van Halen style uh, without being Van Halen. That would be you know copyright. So <laughs> I'll try some some fun tapping stuff. This is kind of fun, like always doing like this kind of stuff. <laughs> Loving it, loving it, my wow. friend. Oh, you uh, guys, you if you haven't checked them out, links in the description. You're checking, you got to check them out. Check them out. I cannot stress it enough. Uh, 21090 Brewing's here. They're this awesome channel. Uh, they brew their own uh, beers together, and they even made a limited edition Def Leppard one that's one of their favorite bands. And every time they're on, we always talk about kicks. And you know the band Kicks, I'm assuming. Yes, yes, for sure. And he's he had to know what you thought of Kicks because they're out of Baltimore. So. Okay. I was yep. wondering if you had any thoughts on kicks. <laughs> no real opinion either way. I have, I have no no dislike or like, whatever. 
Yeah. Just more neutral, I would say. Yeah, that's a good answer. That's, that's difficult. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I'm always teasing what the same as we always talk, we always talk about. Um, Oh my God! What's her name with the the chainsaw? There, uh, I'm a lumberjack baby. He does the solo with the Jackal. chainsaw. Jackal, Jackal, yeah. That's a couple of bands we always bring up. Yeah, they're huge '80 guys. They're always anything '80s. They're all over it. So, I knew he was gonna light up the moment he came in here. So, yeah. <laughs> that's sweet. That's sweet though, for sure. Yeah, well, that was real fun. I appreciate the uh, the opportunity to do a couple of tracks. Our, uh, the pleasure's all ours. Oh my god! Yeah, it's a oh yeah. wow, wow. I have to ask uh, you about your guitar for tuning yes. down before I forget, because that's always been the thing. Of course, I have two RGX five twenty ones. Those were my guitars when I was younger. I lost them. I rebought one's two and a half step down, the other one's standard. And that's always been the dream. Was I know they have motorized tuner heads now, but I've never seen it like this with yours, where it's the knob for uh, tuning automatically with a Floyd. Yeah, that's that's what's called uh, the Variax, and there's there's different styles of guitars out there that I do it. But Line Six has really got it really cool. There's a computer inside the guitar, where um, on the um, uh, on the uh, bridge, there's little like uh, like piezos, 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 whatever you want to call them. Yep. And it goes into a computer, and then it just does whatever you tell it to be, whether you want it to be like a Stratocaster, a Les Paul, um, you know, whatever the guitar you want to choose, it can do that. It can all do the tuning for you as well too. So it's it's kind of neat. It's a fun guitar. So technically, you could have one guitar all night long. And do a full repertoire of music but wow. i guess it's just because i haven't been in it in a while they used to kind of have something playing around that area but i mean it was always yeah it was like electronic drums when it first came out you had to play a bit off time to keep time yeah yeah to be behind the beat and yeah, then, yeah. And, but yeah. now that was like dead on it seemed like there's almost like zero delay that's right yeah the, la the latency is what they call it yes latency sorry yes yeah and that's pretty much it's almost uh non it's really not even a thing anymore it's maybe a couple milliseconds and the human ear really doesn't hear that no i i mean i was i was blown away when you were doing it blown away i definitely know what i need to get into now because that's the biggest pain with the floyd rose was you couldn't use the uh, the mechan the uh, motorized tuners or anything like that yeah yeah so that's a great worker i actually have one of the first generation uh do you know the the amps johnson I've heard of them. I don't think I've ever played. Actually, I think there might have been one at the music store um, used a couple times, and they had actually had some pedals, two Johnson pedals as well. Yes, too. that's right. Yeah. I don't think I've ever played one. They, they, well, they were the first generation of modeling amps, and they were great amps, 212. I got the JM150. I got two 12-inch Celestians into it. Okay. But, the, I mean, you had to be an, a programmer to get through because everything is in layers, so every pedal you'd lose yourself in pages going into, you know, into the settings. Mm -hmm. You would almost lose yourself. It was it's hell on earth the program, but I mean there was an example. It was having those type of feature, but by the time you were done, you're like, I'll just get myself something. I'll get a Digitech or a Line Six or something. And just run it clean. It's it's an amazing amp. I love it still to this day. It, it kicks with the tel two twelve inches. I gotta say it does push, and it cool. it is too driven. But yeah, so I, I but I'm just so taken away by what you, you just tell me. I got to look into that because that's the biggest pain I hate is even just mm -hmm. switching between the two guitars. It would be nice to have one. Yeah, that's even here. Like when I do my things on my show, um, sometimes I'm doing between majorly different tunings. I've got some uh, guitars where I've got a drop D tuner and I can go from a half step down to a drop D and still be fine. But if I want to go between, you know, songs that are completely different tunings. Right. I think I could use one guitar and have, uh, you know, infinite tunings, really. Any any tuning, as long as this guitar is in tune, the computer will take care of wherever I want to go from there. That is so cool. Yeah. I'm going to ask you one guitar question, and I can play it a bit. But uh, Dance the Night Away, to play at the actual chorus the way it's played. And I know the notes, I know everything, and I do know about harmonic tapping. Mm -hmm. But I cannot get... How do you get used to doing that, like, you know, 12 octa like twelve frets up and keeping the timing? I've never been able to get that timing right to get the chime properly doing it. Well, that's, you mentioned earlier, too, about latency when it comes to, like, the old drum machines. Right. Drum, they, Eddie is kind of a guy that always plays behind the beat as it is. So whenever you want to tap something from Van Halen, you want to actually tap it behind the beat a little bit, too. So when, when the percussive note comes out, it's actually on the beat. Whereas when you're when you go to do the tapping part, you want to kind of anticipate the beat. And so as long as you can anticipate it and force yourself to kind of be like that latency, right? So coming in early, you will probably eventually land on the spot. That is yeah. probably the best piece of advice I was ever given. <laughs> it seems to work that way, and you know, and sometimes you know, some people just gravitate towards that naturally. So when you have to force yourself to play behind the beat, um, you know, your 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 body wants to hear that beat and feel that beat. But Eddie's one of the the kings of it. That's why his rhythm playing is so amazing, 
because he's behind that beat and we all want to be right on time and he's not really playing in time if that makes sense it is and i mean like my i was a guitar player then i became a drummer Mm -hmm. so maybe that's why i'm so like you know maybe so anal on the beat maybe that's that's probably that's something i've never considered before yeah i absolutely love that thank you so much uh uh, brett uh Brett uh, Sawyer asks, can you ask Eric if he shares his helix patches if you get a chance? Yeah, uh, yeah. any suggestions for a new Helix LT user, he was saying. Any suggestions? Yeah, um, for any any Helix, whether it be the Helix LT like he's talking about or Helix uh, the rack or the floor or even he- HX Stomp that people see me use, um, it's, it's good to have a bit of an understanding of real amplifiers and real pedals in the real world. Um, but if you know like a, a Fender Twin sounds pretty good in the real world and you go into Helix and you grab the Fender equivalent and you throw on some reverb and your favorite pedal, just start with that because because with the Helix, you can, the sky's the limit. And just because you can, you know, go to the end of the world and back with these digital devices doesn't mean that you necessarily can. So keep it simple. Start with something simple. Pick your favorite amp in the world. And also another thing to try too is don't be intimidated by amplifiers that you would have never in a real life played go through and find something out of your comfort zone. Um, and you might just think, wow, this is some tones I never knew were possible. So keep it real simple, an amplifier, some speakers. Um, I always like to have reverb and delay just to have some ambiance and then just sweeten it a little bit to your liking. But it's very easy to go down that rabbit hole and use like 20 pedals and you know, all mm-hmm. this kind of stuff. You can do it, and your only limitation is your imagination. So just try to Keep it real simple, like anything in, in rock and roll is good. It's, it's it. like a Steve Vai when uh, Zach Wild first, uh, Steve Vai first seen Zach Wild set up, and he's like, "Where's the racks?" You know, and he's like, "Well, you know, this is it." You know, uh-huh. he was telling that years ago. You know, and there's two examples of two very different setups. That's right. We've come a long way uh, since the days of like multiple trucks to carry the guitar player's rigs. You know, now now basically the guitar player throws it in the backpack uh, on on a plane. Yeah, it, it, it's unreal how things have advanced, and some just keep that more simple sound. You know, uh, for myself, when I heard uh, Miracle Man, I'm like, this is what I want to do in life. Uh, with Zach Wild, that tone on that album, there's just something so amazing. He was blazing, and he kind of brought in his Guns N' Roses, kind of opened up that door again, you know, coming back with a more crunch, and he just said, we're going to just, you know, there was just, it was the right time, the right place, and a hard set of shoes to fill, because I still love Jakey Lee as well. I I know some people crap, but I think he is phenomenal. I love Jakey Lee. I dare sure. you to listen to Lightning Strikes and not get chills, you know, like, I mean, that's my other anthem. Yeah, no, Jake is, is phenomenal as well. Back out with the new record now as well, too. And um, a big hero of mine growing up as well, too. I was going to ask you about it, yeah, because I have a soft spot for him, too. I think he got yeah. so shafted and, and could have done so much more. And I hope Badlands would have taken off at the time with uh, Vito Brada. That was unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. And the only time I saw, I mentioned earlier that I saw Ozzy. The only time I saw Ozzy was with Jake. So that was a real privilege. That's true. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. That would mm-hmm. be awesome. I seen with Zach, but it was on the like the second pass of his original tour. You know, it's, but gotcha. And I never did get to experience Zach uh, in Ozzy, but I got to see him with Generation X. And and you know, I never followed Zach that closely. But man, was I like I mean, I knew how good he was, but I never really researched him as a player. And when I saw him play with Generation X, he actually came down our road, literally down our row, and the roadies come up and put like a little road case where he would stand up and play. The spotlight would be on him in our seats. Oh, it was absolutely crazy. And then he walked around. He's playing, uh, I think it was War Pigs by Sabbath. And um, he went around the entire venue with like one of the world's greatest wireless systems. I guess I was told it was like a $10,000 wireless system. Jeez. And just playing this extended solo for 15 minutes and really had um, had me like a, a newfound, you know, like, wow, I'm finally glad I experienced this and, and really absorbed it because it was awesome. The power in his hands. He's kind of like a Steve uh, St- uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan type. He had powerful, powerful hands. Oh, heavy yeah. gauge strings and then the squeals. You know, like I always come back to Miracle Man, but many like that. Yep. That solo, dun, 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 dun. That's just, oh my God, the power behind it, you know? I, I, I try to uh, copy that once in a while and it's a hard thing. And he just does it like, I mean, he's just like burping to him. His, yeah. his, 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 <laughs> So uh, true that uh, is so true <laughs> almost too much sometimes but you know what when you're zach wild there's no too much well that's it too and i, I found when he was in black label society i kind of weaned off of him some it just what you know after a while it's kind of like i'm not mad at the guy but it was too much of the same thing i do agree yeah the early yeah. years when he really shot on the stage was just and he was more my age you know i'm 45 
So he was kind of that age to say, oh, my God, that could be me, you know. <laughs> and uh, just he had that. He came back to the power chords and the two and a half, stuff, the real punch to them that was starting to get lacking in rock music, you know, or, yeah. me or metal, I should say. No, I, I hear you for sure. Yeah, it's, I'm really glad I physically got to go to a show to see him play. It was a real treat. Oh, he's 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 uh, he's a handful and a half. <laughs> he's, I remember he had this guitar strap he had. Like I, I literally, he is as close to me as a webcam, and his guitar strap must have been this wide. And I remember someone just saw the picture I, I posted, and they was like, "Man, that's a man's strap." You know, what I mean? he was like, a, he's like a like a wrestler's belt, like a WWE championship belt, but it was a guitar strap. Well, he's gigantic. I mean, he's a yeah, he's big, big man. man. <laughs> you know? Always, you know, we all we all tend to get a little bit, you know, bigger in our older age. But yeah, yeah he, he, burly, and uh, I certainly wouldn't want to pick a fight with him. Like, we, we wouldn't want to say, "Hey, I don't like your hair." No. <laughs> And if you ever seen these roadies, that's how big they are. Like, cause they're yeah. like, you know, a head above him, and it's like, man, these guys are just a bunch of towers. You know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Very uh, cool. I, I, what is your uh, plans for the next year? Where do you see your channel going? Ambitions, uh, dreams, anything you can let us know? Where you see yourself going? What you're doing? Um. Well, we hit the the ten subscriber, ten thousand subscriber, ten thousand subscriber mark uh, back in November, I think it was. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, the statistics that we were watching at the time didn't look like we we're going to hit it till January. So we kind of hit a little earlier. So that was kind of cool. Um, obviously I want to see continued growth with the channel. Um, but it, I'm going to try this year to not focus on numbers as much. Obviously I'm going to put some, some numbers and some milestones out there that we, you know, you don't go through life without having a target or yes. a tool, but I'm going to, um, obviously we're running four shows that I do right now. Something, one of them has to suffer. Um, you know, you can't have, you know, four things being all equally successful. If you can, you're lucky. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very proud with how EVH and gear TV is going. I'm super proud of how Helix hour is going. Um, um, and rocking dead has taken off really, really well for me as well too. But Kramer corner was, it took off awesome. And then I had to pick somewhere where I was like, okay, well, actually I didn't pick it just by nature. It, it was the softer, um, softer launch, I guess, than anything else. And so I guess the immediate goal, and this is an immediate goal, obviously this doing the, the uh, feature that I'm doing with Gary Kramer there, um, plus coverage at NAM. Tomorrow night, actually, I'm recording um, an off-air interview with uh, Kramer staff. And they're going to give me the whole scoop on 2019 product that we'll be able to um, announce on Wednesday of NAM. As far as I know, sometime during the day, I'll get the uh, lift of the embargo where I can broadcast that. So I guess short term, it's going to really bring Kramer Corner to larger forefront than what it is on the channel right now. And I'm going to give that baby the love it deserves and then circle back around on the kind of like a little uh, treadmill and go back and make EVH more popular and, and Helix Hour more popular. And Nam will have a lot to do with that as well, too, because there's some celebrities that, you know, I've reached out that um, I've told that I'll, I'll touch base with them at Nam. You know, some handshakes in person sometimes can seal the deal as well, too, for guests. So, Definitely. you know, bring some more talent to the, uh, uh, the show, you know, maybe someday, if possible, Eddie Van Halen on the show. Uh, that that is a goal that I've had since day one, um, but that's something that I'm not holding my breath for either. It's not. You know? It's a so it's that, a hard one. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it is for sure. And and the way I look at uh, Van Halen is, you know, Van Halen is quiet in the press uh, for a reason. They like to be quiet in the press, and um, I admire them for a lot of ways because back in the day, long before we had social media like we have now we didn't know what our bands were doing unless somebody did something really crazy and it was in the Inquirer or a newspaper, yeah. you know, and if you're really lucky on the evening news, but now we know what everyone's doing for breakfast, for dinner, all that kind of stuff. And Van Halen is, keeps a quiet uh, press. Yeah. So if uh, the day happens and, and I can have them on the show, awesome. But I, I'm I business as usual for me every day, because if I sit there and hold my breath, um, you know, waiting for, you know, someone to come on the show, then I have no guests ever. Right. That's right. 100. So just, growth and just keep doing you know uh, uh running ideas by the wife here and she's i have many ideas and 99.9 .9 of them she'll say nope 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 and once in a while she'll say that's great and i'll say what you really because <laughs> she'll say and then and then we go with it so you know um thank god i have her i'll say there'd be a, a lot more bad ideas well that's why i was nice to connect with you in that and i hope we get to keep connected it, it like i love what you're doing um i admire what you're doing Thank you. I really do. That's that's in the truth of it all. I really admire the way you put the passion into it and the work into it and your dedication, your uh, personality. Everything is just what YouTube needs. This is what kind of YouTube programming should be. 
is what yeah. you're doing. And I really mean that genuinely. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I certainly wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't fun. Um, it, it is a passion. Like I said earlier, it lets me do exactly what I like to do is talk about music, sometimes play some music. And just like I said, I did earlier um, when the show is done tonight, when we're done in a few minutes here, I'm going to say goodnight to everybody. And I'm going to go spend time with family and tuck junior into bed before it's his bedtime. And you know, that's, that's why I love doing this because I don't want to be coming home at six o'clock in the morning. The sun's coming up, going off to work, you know, that kind of stuff. It's family here and YouTube out there and um, family a lot of times comes into the chat it's just uh, it's it's fun that's why i like i like doing this it lets me connect to the music world and be family here too well i want to thank you for your time tonight you've been nothing but gracious i hope you enjoyed your time with us because i know certainly everybody in the chat really did oh yes you got some new followers most definitely <laughs> so. thank you everybody in the chat. this has been a great pleasure um i didn't get a chance to see the chat much because i seriously just focus on and make sure everything was okay here they understand some names in that and i appreciate that everyone taking their time to come and see it and if you've thrown some love over our way i appreciate that as much uh, equally as well too so thank you and um yeah, i wish you guys all the best in 2019 we're very early into the year so i hope you have a killer one for sure right back at you let's stay in touch thank um, you so much. as at nam if you just happen to see seymour duncan say do you remember the guy from erickson music that had pneumonia okay and he'll that... probably pick you right away <laughs> yeah <laughs> I will for sure. I'll make a point of that if I see him for sure. Thank you so much for your time. You've been absolutely awesome. Have a blast at NAM. As Gary says, he, they're going to wear you out. So <laughs> no worries there. <laughs> I think so. I, we got to make sure we balance our sleep because that's the first thing that'll kill us with the NAM tracks is oh. letting your body get worn down. So we're going to try our best to make sure we sleep well. And yep. you know, because that. that's why a lot got colds, including me by times from not paying attention to it. It can creep up on you. So yeah, enjoy your time and uh, hope we can keep in touch and have fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. You take care. Have a great night now. Bye. Right, bye now. Cheers. Oh, my God. That was awesome. Take care. Yeah, <laughs> was, rock on. Uh, wasn't it amazing, guys? He was oh so. Oh, my yeah. God. Uh, like like how we said at the beginning, he's uh, he's a man of many hats. So yeah. talented. Uh, so much information. So much talent. So much experience. Mind blowing. Mind blowing. Good chat today. And I'd also like to thank everybody that came over with him tonight. His fan base for coming over, checking us out in yes. the. It's been such a pleasure having you guys. We do uh, interviews three times a week. You can see our whole schedule in the About section of our channel. Um, anybody who does YouTube as well, we have uh, two sh channel shout-out nights a week. Here, let me share it with you. Uh, that's where we have a game night. We spin a wheel and all that stuff and have fun. One actually on Sunday night and one in the afternoon on Thursdays for all of our European followers, but you're always welcome. And we have a Tech Talk Tuesday. That's three hours of just brainstorming YouTube. Anything under the sun. You can ask questions. Uh, if we don't have the answers, somebody in the chat probably does. We figure it out together. Also, uh, uh, the interviews, they span from, we've had Emmy Award winning guests on, we've had amazing up and coming channels, all kinds of different niches and stuff like that. So, Yes, definitely. Check out our uh, playlist of season two of our guests uh, that's featured on our homepage. There, That's yes. where you can see all the previous interviews as well. Uh, check that out if you're interested and we hope we can see you back uh, on our channel uh, really great to introduce our audience to new audience and have uh, more interesting and amazing people joining uh, uh, here in the chat as well and who knows maybe on the screen as well <laughs> oh Kev the fam Kevin the fam how are you my friend it's so nice to thank see you thank you so much uh, uh, thank you so much guys yeah. for all the amazing Love words you, buddy. in the chat and yes, pe people were stoked in the chat. They were so on fire mm -hmm. uh, of, of Ferrix playing and all the stuff that you guys were talking about. Uh, chat was lit. Oh. Everybody was having tons of fun today, enjoying their time on Wednesday. Uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Brett, as well. We really do appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to seeing you again as well. And each and every one of you guys, whether you just joined tonight in the middle or been with us right from the beginning, um, we really do appreciate all the love support you guys give us uh glad you enjoy the guests so much uh you want to talk about a bit about friday night's guest on uh yes of course uh, on friday we're gonna have uh our guest uh, scheduled he is gonna join us from australia that's right my 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 old joke <laughs> about back oh to the future oh my god yes <laughs> uh jay boston he's a vlogger and uh, uh he creates electric skateboards so we're gonna be talking about some fun things uh and uh 
Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. He's joining us from Australia on Friday night. Uh, he's a fairly big channel. Uh, uh, lots of uh, interesting ideas uh, uh, in his creative mind. So he's going to be joining us on Friday, JF Boston. That's right. And the funny part is that's two 10,000 subscriber channels in a row. Yes. I never right. thought of that. <laughs> yeah, never. Yeah, that's funny. Just the way that worked yes, out. Yes, so. that's true. I never thought about that. Yep. too. So it's going to be really awesome, guys. Uh, it's and we got a lot of stuff coming up this season like that. Uh, very guests from all walks of life, all different sizes, some on YouTube, some not. It's always great to expand your horizons where you always have like podcasters. How we met Juliet Miranda was a great example of that was reaching out and getting past our normal everyday group and getting to know uh, new people. And that's important just like in real life. It's great to have our friends and it's also great to branch out and, and meet uh, new and interesting things that people are doing. You never know who's going to inspire you, who could be your next uh, favorite channel to watch or it could be your next favorite channel to watch you or vice versa or collaborate with. The sky's the limit here. It's, it's, it's only limited to what you set your goals onto. And uh, you guys are awesome people. And thank you so much for being here tonight with us. And guys, if you haven't hit the like button, please do. If you haven't hit the subscribe yet, that would be awesome. And also, uh, anybody who's new here, what we do every night is we pick a live stream out of here. And we offer people the chance to go over and uh, do a raid. But instead of just a quick raid, go over and check them out for a few minutes. See if it's a channel for you. You might meet some new people that you like. And it also gives somebody new some support as well. Uh, as we always say, we're all in it together. Uh, we're uh, a, we're all growing YouTube channel. Whether we have 5,000, 10,000, 15, 20, 000, whatever, we're all up and coming channels here and face the same uh, struggles, the same joys. So it's nice to pass those things on and uh, we pick somebody tonight. Next time could be you. You never know. And guys, wanted to remind you, if you wanted to hear the true live version of Eric yes. playing, go over to his uh, uh to his channel. Hey, All the links are included down below in the description, so you can go and check him out. Most definitely, guys. Uh, he is phenomenal. Such a great guitar and such a great interview. Like so interesting. You know, he was awesome. Oh my God, Gary, I would love that. Yeah, an interview with Floyd Rose. That would be absolutely. Fa oh yeah, I would absolutely love that because I mean, I created the sound in my opinion. As much as the others. Uh, when I worked at Jam, we were starting to distribute them and uh, their line of guitars. I don't even know if they're still doing them now. That's been a while. But Selfie time. Thank you so much, uh, Heavy Metal Magnet. Thank you. You always keep me on my toes. Let's see what we got going, guys, uh, for our Blue Wrench Selfie group. Let's get them up here. We got Asgard Studios. Wow, loving it, my friend. What a great shot. Oh, I love Aww. the tattoo, too. Oh, I love that the candle. Oh, look at the, oh, how is it called? Uh, yeah, the horn. Yeah, yeah, the horn. The yeah. horn. That Thank was you. Very cool. Very, very cool. Thank you so very much. There's Heavy Metal Magnet again with those epic selfies. Oh, it, okay. So I seen it up above, so he redid it. Okay. There we got Dave. There's our buddy Dave, Organic Studios, with a rocking interview. <laughs> Thank you so much, my friend. Awesome. Really do appreciate it. We got our buddy Nomadic Bike who gave us an awesome raid tonight. That was so kind of him. Loving it. Thank you so much. Thank you once again, my friend. And we got our good friend Blackjack. Always love seeing her here. How you doing, sweetie? Hope you're having a really great night. Always tuning in, always watching. Long hours, uh, yes. but still tuning in. Thank you yes. so much. She is so sweet. <laughs> That is awesome. Oh, oh, from Gator Bite. Okay, okay. I wasn't sure. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. And there is Heavy Metal Magnet. Hashtag Blue Wrench Group. Wow. My logo for my channel. Shared your path. Shared your path, friends. Wow. Shred. Shred, shred. Shred your path, friends. That makes so much more sense. <laughs> Don't mind me tonight. <laughs> I still got to get that hooked on phonics. <laughs> yes, definitely. I don't know what's going on lately. I just given up the ability to read. But <laughs> so good to have all you guys. So, uh, do you have uh, somebody picked on? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, let's uh, check out uh, this channel. They are uh, I, live right now. I just want to say, 
the party source reviews are oh. having a, t- a whiskey talk Wednesday today, and uh, let's go and check them out. I just want to welcome William Dunham. Uh, greetings to all. Greetings to you. Unfortunately, it just ended, but I gave you a wrench. I hope you can subscribe to us and go back and watch the interview and plus some more of the things that we do. We do interviews, we do tech talks, all that stuff. But uh, so great to have you in here and thank you for stopping by. And guys, if you haven't hit the like button, please do. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It really does help us out a lot. Bobby, I'm so glad you enjoyed it and it was such a pleasure having you. Thank you so very much. Uh, thank you, Tammy, for posting the link. Really do appreciate it for the merch, guys. Gary Holt, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, mm. uh, Kramer. <laughs> so so oh many God. great. Jo- uh, yeah, it was yes. great meeting you all tonight. Wow, I can't believe that. That's that's. Uh, uh, we're honored, uh, guys. Mm. Thank you so much uh, for uh, for watching mm-hmm. us. And uh, thank you, Spice of Life yep. with Linda. Thank you, Philip Cocker. And thank you, guys, for all the kind words. Uh, thank you, Gussie. Uh, you guys are absolutely aw- uh, Brian as well. Thank you so much. Irish Reaper YT at Pusha. It's 3 a.m. I got to run. Left my light guy. Thank you so much, my friend. And we do appreciate it. Mystic Angel Christina, never apologize for real life comes first and commitments and all those things. Whether it's two minutes or two hours, once a week or every night, we appreciate your time that you can make. And so have no fear. Have no worries. Uh, same for you, Shauna. Uh, Sh- uh, Shauna, uh, no worries. Never worries, but just great to have you. Thank you so much, Jason and Jim. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Brent, yes, and we do appreciate it. That was really cool. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Oh, Martin, uh, you're back to work. Will you be safe and be well, and you take care of yourself? Much love to you, uh, Spice of uh, Life with Linz. You be well. Uh, You guys are, uh, can I put in, can I put you in contact with Ben from YouTube? They can terminate the bond. Well, if you can help us in any way, please do. Yeah. Uh, um, I think I have you on Discord, so you can message me there. Anything would be appreciated. Uh, th- thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah. I do appreciate that. Um, if you want to interview with Gary Kramer, I'll go. yes, please. Gary, yes, yeah. please. <laughs> Here, Gary, I'm going to paste our links. If you haven't uh, joined yet, here, I'm going to put all of our social media links. The best one for us is Twitter, but anything works. You can also find them in the About section. Uh, where, wherever you, uh, the About section, the descriptions of all our videos. Thank you so much, and we do appreciate it. Thank you. That would be amazing. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, if you are on Twitter, uh, follow us on Twitter. I'll follow you back. Uh, uh, that would be amazing. Uh, wow. Uh, thank you. And one last chance, guys, before we go, EVH and Gear TV Network, you see in there, just commented above. If you haven't subscribed to him yet, it is a must, guys. It is a must. He is so awesome. Uh, killer time this evening. Thank you all uh, to all uh, the uh, thank you to all the awesome people in the chat as well. And uh, thank you to you as well for inviting your friends to come over. Uh, it's great when great people meet great people. So it's been absolutely awesome. Uh, Kevin, the fan, thank you so much. So much love to you. Uh, guys, thank you so much for everything. Uh, I, it means a lot. And uh, you guys are really cool. Uh, Gary Cre- Yeah, been yeah. checking that out already. Oh, okay, before. perfect. Yeah, she has it. You. So. Yeah. No, no, you guys you guys are absolutely phenomenal. And please get in contact with Juliet Moran. Well, we're going to actually set you guys up together because you're going to meet Juliet. So uh, she is absolutely awesome. Uh, 21090 Brewing, you know better than that to ever apologize for missing something. Yes. Huh. You're always God. welcomed here. We love having you here. And uh, Eab said I messaged on Discord. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It really means a lot. Thank you very much, Eab. Any help is appreciated. You guys are awesome. You guys make those hard times uh, a thousand times better. We'll see you guys soon. The link's in the description, guys. Please hit the like button on the way out. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I just put up all our social media. If you haven't joined them as well, that would be great. Love to mingle with you there, too. And uh, hopefully you can join us over on the raid, guys, and show some love to another channel. Maybe we get to meet some really cool people, too. Take care, guys. Have a great night. Have a great night, Ricky. Much love to each and every one of you guys. Take care for now. Bye.
Thank you.